everybody. Dalton, say hi. Or run away. Run you know, he's five. I, I can't. Oh, there. He's back. I can't <laughs> control him. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everybody, to another Tuesday Night Live. I'm Kat, the nurse flipper. Hi. What's your name? Dalton. Dalton. Uh, I am joined by Rod picking and punching my co-host. And then below me is Troy from Mountain Man Treasures. He has been on before. And Art from Art of Resell has not. So it is his first show. So I'm going to make Troy and Art big and let them introduce themselves to you. Their links to their channels are down in the description. And Marsha will be dropping them throughout the night, too, if you guys aren't subscribed to them. So here is Troy. Hey, uh, Troy at Mountain Man Treasure. I, I never know what to say during this part, Kat, but uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a YouTube channel and uh, go to garage sales and show what I find. I'm in Montana, so I'm running out of garage sales, but uh, yeah, sell on there sometimes on whatnot. And uh, more recently, I have a vintage uh, booth in a brand new little store mall thing that opened. And uh, we're in the second month of that and doing uh, doing very, very well. And so excited to do that. And we're getting ready actually to uh, just as a teaser, getting ready to launch uh, myself and four business partners. We're getting ready to launch another business that you guys can play with. It's going to be an auction house, an online uh, auction house. And we'll be consigning and selling stuff, uh, individual things and also reseller lots and stuff like that. Uh, paperwork is filed and things are happening. The first the first auction uh, we're looking at going to be probably uh, a couple weeks into January. So it's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm spread a little thin some days, but I enjoy it. And don't forget your other channel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I have, I have that as well. Thanks Rod. Yeah. I have a uh, big sky paranormal. If you want to check out uh, ghosty stuff, I go and uh, I go and investigate overnight uh, in random, you know, prisons, bordellos, you know, it, a lot of different places. I'm actually going to be able to get into uh, Virginia city, which is an, a ghost town. I get to do that here uh in 2024 so that'll be fun so yeah big sky paranormal the other youtube channel so just a few Perfect. things going on here <laughs> all the things <laughs> here is our uh yeah i don't know I, I don't hunt ghosts no um i hunt garage sales no um my name's art i'm from las vegas i'm a west coast kid born and raised um i have a youtube channel i'm on facebook tiktok instagram um i i I don't know what it is. Like, I love going to garage sales. I love flipping online. I sell on eBay. Uh, mostly on whatnot. I do like 80%, 90% of my things go on whatnot. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a small timer compared to a lot of people around here. So I'm just, I'm still trying to do my best on making content. I'm going to garage sales and showing how much fun I have. Um, how much fun I have going out there, finding gems and finding clothing, finding underpriced, undervalued things. And just flipping it online, like the thrill of going out there, just doing it every weekend is what gets me up. So, yeah, that's I guess that's why I'm here. Perfect. I don't know what else to say. Don't, don't be <laughs> no, modest. No, that's good. You're good. There's over 100,000 people on Facebook and say you're a small timer, buddy. Come on now. You're <laughs> you're up there with, with, with the best. Come on. But my, probably the most entertaining whatnot out there, if you guys haven't seen him, I've literally watched him take off a shirt and burn a flag once on whatnot. So... It's, yeah, uh, you still know that. Yeah, yeah. It's only paying twenty bucks to burn a 49ers flag in the in his driveway, so it gets. Yeah, that was during summer. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Sue has the first question, and it's for Troy. She wants to know where do you source from in the winter when you have no yard sales? Um, well, I build a pile. I'm like a squirrel, you know. I during I, I way overbuy during the summer. Uh, you know, and so that that death pile is not a death pile for me. It's it's my winter pile. I, I definitely have more than I need because I don't get all the way through it. But yeah, I, I buy more than I need uh, during the summer is primarily what I do. But I'll also go and you know I'll, I'll buy on whatnot or various online auctions. I bought I think two storage lockers before. I mean I, I try to sort of supplement here and there, but mostly it's just extra summer stuff. That works. Miss Patty know, wants. To, oh, go I'm ahead, Ross. I was like, Troy, where are you located? So people that here that don't know you. Yeah, I'm in Mo I'm Western Montana. So yeah. it's definitely we're, we still have some estate sales actually that are running. Uh, I've been to some the last couple weekends. They're taking this weekend off, but then they're back the next. So I have a few estate sales still before it gets deep into winter. So those help as well, but it's definitely fewer and 
further between right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Miss Patty asked if I got her emails. Miss Patty, I don't think that I did. If I did not answer you, I did not see them. And I am caught up right now. So let me know where you sent them and maybe send them again because I do not recall seeing any from you. Miss Carol wants to know, what do you think is the best platform to sell fine jewelry on? Probably Cat's Whatnot channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't even sell not fine jewelry, frankly. I mean, I sell some brooches and random things, but it's not, I don't know much about it. So I haven't delved too deeply into jewelry of any kind. I'm trying to learn more. That's one thing. We have somebody actually, that's what the, the, the shop has been really nice to make connections with other people that know other things. And so I was actually chatting with one today, made a connection, uh, actually, Rod, that she's got access to a ton of VHS tapes from somebody whose father owned a VHS store that oh, closed wow. down and then passed away. I've got storage lockers full of VHS tapes that I'm going to be able to get to, which is awesome. But this lady does buttons and jewelry. So she's teaching me very small nice. things as I go. But I, I don't really know jewelry. Buttons and buttons and you said buttons and what? Well, like buttons little and jewelry, buttons yeah. and, and jewel, different things of jewelry. Yeah. She's, she sells buttons. Yeah. yeah, people love vintage buttons. There are some that are really expensive too. I don't know yeah. much about them. I know, the ones, I know like the ones from like Silver War and stuff that can bring really good money. Like okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. even like just sewing, like they're off of shirts and jackets and stuff. Some of the vintage ones go for really big money. Yeah. There's a market for everything, man. It's nuts. Yeah, it's it's, it's that's uh, that's uh, that, that that's true. No, it's true. That it's it's, it's insane. What. You can literally sell anything out there. Literally napkins. I'm sure there's somebody on eBay right now selling. Right. <laughs> I actually sold napkins and whatnot. Like my last whatnot show, old, <laughs> I sold old vintage Disney whatnot uh, napkins from Disney parks from the 80s. Oh, uh, did you really? Oh, yeah. See the, well, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, all right. Best platform to sell fine jewelry art. You know. Um, honestly, I would have no idea. I wish I knew more about jewelry because when I go to these garage sales. I always see uh, these ladies, the same ladies every time, always asking for costume jewelry and um, always asking for jewelry. You know what I mean? I wish I knew more about my stuff, so yeah, I wouldn't so, know. Where to go. So I'm actually in the same boat as Art. I don't know much about it. So, Kat, this would be a question, two questions for you. One is the question they just originally asked, but also for people that want, like, say, me and Art, that we want to start learning about jewelry, what do you recommend? How do we get started learning about jewelry for people out there? Because you come across it all the time at yard sales. I think it's really important for a lot of people to know, you know, what recommendation would you have on, on stuff like that? Yeah. So overall, I think that like learning just the basics, like the sterling and gold, because those are at yard sales. I know Julian finds that stuff a lot. So even carrying a magnet, which will check like gold and silver is not magnetic. I would say that's like a number one to maybe find precious metals. Like if you stick a good magnet in the middle of a costume, it's going to pick up everything, but it won't pick up the gold and sterling. Look for names. You can look everything up just like you do anything else on eBay. So that stuff that's named is pretty easy to look up. I do my research videos. I have quite a few on jewelry now. So that kind of gives you an idea of like, look and some of the names that are selling for really big money. Cause most of my research videos are pieces that sell for a thousand dollars or more. Um, the highest I found out in the wild is a $300 brooch at a flea market for 25 bucks. So they, they are out there. Yeah. Um, and that one was a named piece. I was really easy to look it up. And when I got that 25 was a lot for me to pay for a piece of jewelry. So, um, yeah, magnifying glass or a, uh, jewelry loop so you can read them. And I, as far as the actual question, where's the best place to sell it? I primarily, my higher dollar stuff goes on eBay, but I am trying to start doing more higher dollar on whatnot versus kind of lower mid range costume jewelry. But I don't necessarily have that audience just yet. So like I had three Juliana brooches for sale last night that are worth probably $500 plus asking $150 start and got no takers last night, which those are the ones I see Sarsar in the jewelry. She is super, super knowledgeable, like knows like a hundred times what I know. She is a jewelry specialist. Sarsar was in my, in my auction and bought a few pieces. Um, she said a black, 
a black light that'll help you like a real amber will glow under a black light real pearls will grow under a black light um and glowy glowy pieces you know the glowy glowy glass is hot right now so is glowing jewelry um so you can check that as well and you'll learn like the green glowing glass you will learn what those glowing stones typically look like so my answer is i put all that on whatnot and i did this before and then i turn around and i auction stuff on ebay and made it like the last one i offered for i think a thousand on whatnot sold it for $1,500 in a day. So it would have been a quick $500 profit if somebody had taken me up on that in a day. Uh, I think some of these higher dollar brooches I'm offering are going to also be placed over on eBay. But I, until they sell, I will keep offering them on whatnot. So I would say eBay, if I had to choose one, eBay would be my choice. If they're rare brands, then and rare pieces, then auction is very, very possibly the best way to go. A lot of mine are probably going to go that way, but start it at the lowest you're willing to take. So like I might start mine at what I'm asking for on whatnot with expectations that they'll double or triple by the end of the auction versus whatnot. I expect I would probably just get one bid, you know, so whatnot, you can sell it fast, but you're, I would say expect to make half to a third of what you would make on eBay. So if you're willing to sit there and wait, do you want the fast nickel or you want the slow dime? You know, that's, that's the question. Um, I, I, I have I seen some pieces go high, but you need the buyers. You need the audience that knows you have fine jewelry and I don't have that yet. So I'm trying to slowly build that up. I still have some of my lower end pieces that we will blow out on whatnot with $2 starts. Um, and I think until I get through all that and only have the sterling silver and higher end costume that I'm going to confuse the heck out of people because <laughs> they're going to come one time and I have like this amazing higher end. And then the next time it's going to be, you know, kind of low mid costume. So I don't think I'm truly going to build like the fine jewelry buyers until I get rid of all the other stuff, if that makes sense, because I think it's just like confusing. Yeah. to them i do them completely separately though i would not recommend doing fine jewelry in the same auction as lower end costume i think that would really make it, sense it's totally yeah. different buyers yeah. yeah holly wants to know does a higher there's a higher fee so the the higher you promote something at do you get more views for a higher promotion rate um allegedly I mean, we don't have numbers, right? Like eBay won't go, look, here's the books and here's what happens. So, I mean, it's supposed to work that way. Um, you know, the, the higher you promote, the better chance you have of showing up on somebody's search. I, I guess most of me trusts that, yeah, generally that's going to happen. Um, but I guess we don't know for sure. In a vacuum, yes. Art? Oh, I, I, um, I think I promoted like one thing in the last year on eBay, like allegedly you get more views and stuff like that. But honestly, I, I've, I've never seen a difference in sales by promoting things. So I, I say, I say, I, it's probably the wrong thing. It's probably the wrong thing. No, but Troy, I, do you, do you promote your listings? It's uh, art. It's probably also your, I mean, you sell very specific things and you probably have built up an audience that knows art's going to have these things and it's things people are looking for, right? Like the vintage hat or clothes or thing. Yeah. it's not, you're not selling in a, in a category like toys or jewelry that's completely flooded. Right. So, so honestly, so this is, this is the complete truth. So I've slowly gone away from eBay cause I've done a lot more of, of whatnot. Um, I think th even throughout this whole year, I think the most items I've had in my eBay store is probably about 60 items. Um, you know, I recently quit my job in July during the summer and then I've gone to get my my 90 day to almost double and still have a low amount of things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I Of course, uh, uh, because of social media, I think I do have a following on eBay because I see I have like, I think like 1,400 followers on eBay, which is insane. Like, I didn't even know you can get followers on eBay. But um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that was even a thing. But like, I, I've never promoted things. But like, for me, I use eBay as a platform to sell 
things that I won't sell on whatnot. Like for example, like mus uh, music mixers, you know, I find those a lot of all times. Golf clubs, I'll sell those on eBay. Um, you know, heavier items I would sell on eBay. You know, what I mean, more of a uh, of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Rod, help me out here, man. Um, <laughs> More a hard good items that I, that I do. Yeah, stuff. And you also have a certain price point too that you list on eBay that you you know like fifty bucks and a higher or something like too. Don't yes. you? Yeah, yeah. Also for that too. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot of people that are selling both whatnot and eBay. They're they're moving to a, a similar model like that. Kat, have you adopted that model yet? A certain price point on, on eBay since you've been selling a lot, a lot more and whatnot. Um, than- we're doing well. I mean, we've kind of vice versa though. We've lo- lowered what we're selling on whatnot. We're back on eBay more. But I mean, um, you have a, I mean, going forward, since you have such a big inventory, are you putting a certain price point on your items that you list going forward? We're trying to do 2025, but I'm still yeah. buying a lot. So, I mean, if I get five $10 items, I'm going to list them because yeah. that's just one listing and really it's $50 in sales. So, you know, like overall, that one listing is still going to make 50 bucks. Um, but I am trying to hit the $20. However, I'm still getting the lots, you know, yeah, and if it's easy, yeah. like the license plates, a lot of those are $15, but they're so easy to list and ship and that I haven't really tried the license plates. If I got another big lot, I might, but that kind of brings me back to like, I have primarily focused on the jewelry and linens on whatnot. I don't know if I start going kind of all over the place with what I'm selling, if I would mess up trying to cultivate the buyers that I want for the higher end jewelry. Cause that's ultimately my goal um, by doing all of this other stuff. So I'd have to think long and hard, like I'm probably going to do a couple more linen shows and then I might phase that out as well and just try and focus on. So I'm doing it the opposite. I'm focused. I want to focus on higher dollar on whatnot and the lower niching stuff down. will go on. Okay. Niching down, yeah. niching down as, as you would say. Oh, I just realized I never answered the question. So <laughs> does you hire fees? You promote um does the higher fee you promote get you more views yes and no because if you're promoting in a category that only has five or six items listed there something that's very specially it's it's there's no sense of promoting that listing because if you price it right you'll be fine if you're promoting in in a a very saturated market such as saying like like men's clothing women's clothing where you're going to have you know, 10,000 items for searching jeans. Yes, it's going to be beneficial if you promote higher in there because you're going to push it to the top of the, because you have more competition. So it really comes down to a lot of people would just promote every single item and they really shouldn't. I mean, if you're being very methodical with your, your, your process. Listen here, buddy. You promote every item. I, I, listen, I, do. I, I promote, for example, like if I have a, a rare comic book or that's graded or uh, an item of high and collectible that's there's only five less on eBay. There's no sense in me promoting it and giving eBay another two percent, three percent, four percent, where you know where I can I can pocket that money because there's no other competition for it. But yes, I do promote 90, 95 percent of my items, and you know, but I stick it to a two or three percent because I I just you know try to price point my items at a very competitive price with the market price so they do move. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, theoretically you should get, but Troy's right. Like they're not giving us numbers. Like, yeah. and how do you know what you would have had if you didn't promote it? You don't know for sure. Um, Usually I wait, like I'll, I, I do promote most all of my stuff, but I'll, I'll put it up and let it sit for like two weeks and see if somebody just naturally finds it. If they don't, then I'll promote. And I even look just to make Rod happy. You know, I, I actually look and I sort by views and watchers on the stuff that's not promoted yet. And if it's getting a lot of views and it has multiple watchers, I'll still leave that because people are still finding it. But if it's been listed for two and three weeks, even if it's something unique, at that point, I'm like, you know what? Let's promote it and let's get it out there. But I give it a chance to sell on its own first. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm i OCD and don't want to see. You have 500 listings to promote. I just want it to be gone. That's why I, I get that too. And it's working. I mean, like we actually, we're, we're doing very well on eBay right now. We just hit 17,000 for the month on eBay. And um, we were at 5,000 two months ago. So, I mean, eBay has really come up for us. Um, and I'm kind of like, if it works and it's not broken, I'm not trying to fix it. So I'm not gonna try and change my model when what I've been doing for years works, but so mine's more habit, I think, at this yeah. point, and you know, feeling like it works. 
like what we're the way and i i promote high i promote at trending plus three but the reason i do that as far as promotion is i look at the other platforms like poshmark is 20 percent, right so if ebay's 12 and i promote at eight i'm still at that 20 percent that posh is charging me yeah. if it would have sold over on poshmark and we buy so low typically at 10 percent i would rather have more sales and pay more in fees you know, like, and we, like, I, it's been crazy for us. Uh, the last three days have been close to $700 or more. Today's almost at $800. And it's just, it's like our eBay numbers are going up. Hopefully I can keep them going up. But at the moment, they are where we want them to be. Hollyhock. Oh, my head itched. Hollyhock said, if you get an offer and the buyer wants to make an offer and also bundle, do you do that under the seller hub or would you edit listings for the buyer? How, how would you do that if you had a buyer wanting to buy multiple things and wanting to make an offer on them? I mean, I, I guess I would just tell them, you know, I, you can take all those down and make a custom like uh, listing for them. Right. I'm probably just averse to that extra work. So I tell them, you know, yeah, just send me an offer. Maybe work it out through messages of how much total do you want? You know, I've done that of people that want, you know, I can spend a hundred dollars on these four things. If that works for me, I say, okay, well send me an offer of 25 on each of them. And that's the easiest way. Now you, you will, it, you, you may, if they're wanting to like combine the shipping on that, then you can just send them through the seller hub. You can send them an invoice for what the actual shipping cost would be. So you tell them, Hey, but before you pay, go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll send you an invoice for the actual amount. Um, or if it's set to auto pay, you can always refund them the, the difference. Um, and then your fees are paid back on that through eBay on whatever refund you give them for the shipping discount. So that's how I would do it, but you can make a custom listing if you want to go that far. Yeah. I, uh, I've had that one happen a couple of times, you know, about people wanting to bundle a couple of things. Um, I normally just refund them after their purchase and stuff like that, the difference. But um, yeah, making a, make, making an extra listing is doing a lot of more work, you know? I've, I've never really thought of that one at that part, but um, you know, just how you're saying, you know, send an offer on both listings, how you're saying 25, 25, mm -hmm. that totally does make sense. That's probably the most easiest route I would tell people to do, so yeah. Yeah, it's uh, with the, uh, so I would say if it's the international, I mean, I pretty much did the same thing what they just said, but one thing to keep in mind, if it's international, you can't bundle items together if they're an international buyer. Not yet. They're, eBay is adding that in there now. Yeah. So what, what I would do is for situations like that, I would actually, the listing that they're messing me on, I would just take go in and take the pictures from the other listings, add it to that one listing, and just add in the other items. I say, hey, here's the listing. We'll make a bundle deal on this one that we have messaging on. Once you buy it, then I'll pull down the other listings. Um, but it's just easier for them to find it that way instead of creating a separate listing because they're already communicating back and forth from that actual listing. So that's how I've done mine in the past. Um, you know, especially for international buyers, because eBay will just take them to the cleaners on shipping yeah. because they'll have to, you have to pay a separate shipping. You can't ship it together. So that poor buyer from like, I had a buyer from like the UK bought three magazines for me instead of putting it all in one box, eBay, me, me charge that buyer shipping for each of those packages to the shipping hub and then they got charged a separate shipping cost for each of those magazines i mean something that could have been so simple for that buyer that buyer probably paid like three times actually he probably paid like 10 times what the actual shipping cost would have been because he had to pay the international shipping charge for each of those items but he just told me there's a i told him i can cancel it and combine it for him so he's like just just ship it so um, yeah, and don't forget last week I got that email that they were trialing me on combined international yep. shipping, but I had an international buyer that bought and they did not combine it. Um, so I don't know exactly how that works for it to work. Um, I actually shipped them separate because it was a very big sale. The buyer made an offer on one item and paid. And then they came back and offered for the other nine. It was it was boxes, of course. Um, and it was a $250 sale. And I asked them, do you want me to cancel, make you one listing with all 10? They didn't answer. And I wasn't going to cancel a $250 sale. So I actually just shipped them separate because they had paid for both because they weren't answering me. 
and I didn't want to wait. I wanted to go ahead and get it out. Typically for me, I, I agree with Rod. If it's an international buyer, I will tell them, uh, I'll make them a listing. What sucks is I wish eBay had a way that we could see they were international. Cause a lot of times you just get a question about bundling. Mm -hmm. and you don't know if they're in the U S or not. So like for U S buyers, I tell them, just make me a separate offer. I'll send you an invoice. But a lot of times now eBay has the auto pay turned on, on, you know, when buyers make offers. Yeah. So in that case, I just refund them the difference for the shipping is how I go about it. I'm just worried. I'm going to take listings down, make them a custom listing and then they don't buy it. You well, that's know? Why, yeah. I don't take them down until, until after they purchase, but I just changed that one. You can click and go back and add, yeah, but still pain in the butt regardless. Yeah. Um, did you? Yeah, because if they didn't buy it, you'd have to go back and fix it. Yeah, and absolutely. I typically only will do that if they're messaging back and forth, where I'm like, I'll change it now, and like I need to make sure you're ready to buy this now, you know, so somebody else doesn't get it, and then I'll price it high and tell them send an offer for the agreed upon price so that it doesn't get snapped up by somebody else or get pulled into my sale because my sale is on everything. So everything eventually gets picked up sometimes in like five minutes, sometimes it takes five hours and I've had that happen. So now I price it higher so that they have to make an offer yep. so that it doesn't go lower than what I want. Um, Let's see. Mr. Bob wants to know if you use a thermal printer, do you ever have to clean them? And if you do clean it, how do you clean it? I think you're supposed to. Um, I I'm team Dymo, but I have an old Dymo that the, the new version, I know they added a counter and you don't, you can only use their labels and stuff. And it's obnoxious. I have the older one that I guess I got grandfathered in and I've always had good luck with it. I've never had, any issue with it getting dirty and not actually printing out correctly. Um, I tend to do the old uh, Nintendo cartridge trick on it every once in a while. <laughs> and that seems to, to work just fine and keep it in operating order. So otherwise, yeah, I mean, may maybe I should, but I, I honestly, I don't. I think the best label printer out there, better than Rolo, better than any brand out there is that, uh, I can't even say it, my bun or my bun. You know, Mun -bin. Mun -bin. Mun -bin. it's like ours, Rod. It's a me yeah, and Rod yeah. have a generic one we use too. I, I found one at the flea market. I got a hot pink colored one. For yeah, I think one. I got it for 10 bucks, and it is the greatest thermal printer in the world. I swear. Rodo is so overrated, it's too expensive. Um, but that thing is like it's it's super durable too. What I need to clean it, I just use a damp rag, and then I might put like a little bit of like Windex on it, just wipe it down a little bit. But I have mine in my shelf. It's closed up like in a little closet thing. But I, I've never had no problems with it. Yeah. Labels matter. Yeah, with mine, I mean, I've had mine go for the past year or two, and it's been great. No really issues. I guess the label printers like underwear. You just just use it, and when it's time to clean it, you throw it out and you buy a new one. I guess right. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I never, had to, never had to clean mine really. So. I, I don't my know. Dymos I've had like for years and I yeah. got it on. Well, this one I actually got from Josh, Harry Tornado. Um, he got it and offered it to like the first person who said they wanted. I was fast, but I've had it for years. I think like three years. I've never cleaned it. I've never done anything to it. Sometimes it gets stuck. I have to unplug it and replug it. And then I have what's ours called, Rod? I forget. Uh, Noom. Is it Nooms? I forget every single time. You just need to have that. Whatever me and Rod use, it's in my Amazon links. Whatever we yeah. use, um, that one's my backup, and I use it for stickers and stuff, and I haven't had any issues with that. Yeah, I, I've had that one like a year now, I think. Yeah, I used to have the one that, that Art had. Um, we had that one for a while, and then I ended up getting a new one. So, I think Rolo is like super overrated. It's super. Off Nova. Thank you. They like, know what Nova. we use. Yeah. Off Nova, Nova. yes, it. that is what we use. Yeah, yeah, and it's under really. hundred bucks, guys. It's under hundred bucks. Because yeah, what's what's Rolo now? Like three hundred bucks. The Jeez. newest one is probably like I wouldn't be surprised if it was like four hundred bucks. Or yeah, there's expensive. The wireless and Bluetooth and all that stuff, but uh, yeah. it's it's super overrated. It's not. Nah. Yeah. Well, yeah, the were... cheap ones work just as well. Yeah, yeah. 
they were just early they were early adapters to the market and they they had a big you know a big market share of that so they can charge where they want i guess at this point yeah that's true all right has anybody heard this yet so ruby's saying she just heard it tonight that the irs might delay the 1099s again for 600 dollars or more in sales on ebay you may still get one if you have more than 200 transactions or sell more than twenty thousand. so have any of us heard the delay again i haven't heard about it, it wouldn't surprise me but i guess I'm on team doesn't matter. I mean, you got to pay your, your taxes anyway. Frankly, it's easier if they send you the paperwork. So I'm the yeah. last guy to ask. <laughs> no, I would say you would have, I heard that eBay and some other platforms were still trying to push for the, the, the remove because what they're trying to, people don't know, they're trying to move it to before it was 20,000 and 200 transactions. They're trying to move it if you had a $600 in gross sales. That you're going to get hit with the 1099 form. That's what they're trying to move it to. That's what it's supposed to be this year. But I I did hear a rumor that they were trying to push it back again the the following year. So I don't know. Um, not sure yet on that one. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but I agree with Troy, guys. It doesn't matter if you get the form. You need to be paying your taxes. It is the law, whether you have that 1099 in hand or not. And I will tell you from, a, and I've told this many times over the years, I have a good friend from middle school who is a reseller as well, who sells on eBay, no 1099. The IRS got her and she paid for years on back taxes. It is all electronic. They can see that stuff, guys. They can see it. Um, and she, yeah, got caught, hadn't filed taxes on eBay income because no 1099 and it, it bit her in the butt. So, so if you think not getting it keeps you safe, it does not. So I'm on eBay's website right now and it says right here that the that 2021 and 2022 gross payments of 20,200 transactions. You're going to hit with the 1099K in the mail. It says two, two, 2023, you're going to hit gross payments of $600. You will get hit with a 1099. So as of right now, be prepared for everyone to get hit with the 1099 form unless they change something before the end of the year. But as of right now, that's how it said directly on eBay's tax paperwork on their website. Sonny sent us a super chat. To ask Art a question. Hi, Sonny. <laughs> Sonny, Sonny, want, do you remember Sonny Dalton? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, Art, who's cooking the turkey? Um, I am. I saw Sonny today at uh, Trader Joe's. That's why he's asking that. <laughs> What's up, Sonny? So, who's cooking All it? Right. I'm cooking yeah, it. I'm it cooking is Sonny. It. How, wait, how are you cooking yeah. it? Are you uh, baking yeah. it? You're frying it? Uh, in the oven. In the oven? Okay. In the oven. Okay. Okay. The cat got Dalton. All right, Sonny, let's give you, I'm going to give you the whale. I like the whale. Here you go. Thank you, Sonny. Dalton said, yeah, that's Sonny on there. And he pointed to your picture. And then he's going to, he's going to go put Band-Aids all over himself because the cat popped him, which who knows what he did to the poor cat. He plays and then the cat's over it and he doesn't realize it. And then he ends up with battle scars. <laughs> Troy, I know you answered this in the chat, but Patty, Patty wants to know if you have any snow on the ground. She's saying they got an inch there in Spokane. Yeah, we we had uh what was it two weeks ago we got hit with a pretty good storm we had like 10 inches or something um but then it warmed back up into like the 40s 50s and it all it's all gone we're so there's supposed to be a system coming in um i think we're supposed to get light snow wednesday night so we'll have we'll have a scuff of snow for thanksgiving but not not too bad not yet not. yeah MC Han says, I just started cross-listing from eBay to Poshmark and Mercari. I'm wondering if you change your prices from one platform to another. I don't do a lot of cross-listing because I'm not, I, I'm too busy and scatterbrained to take it off of one platform when it sells on another. I, I know myself. I tried and then I'd get like a new like on something that I realized I sold like two weeks ago. And so I decided I need to, I need to cool that. Um, when I did, yeah. I mean, because different audiences are paying different amounts. Right. And so I, I, I did often, 
um, you know, Mercari, you're going to get a lot of low balls, Poshmark, especially if it's, um, you know, clothing or stuff like that. It feels like people pay a little bit higher. Plus, like Kat mentioned earlier, it's higher fees. So you might want to try and bump it up a little bit to absorb the extra fee, depending on the platform. So, I mean, I, I guess it's item and platform dependent, but in theory, yeah, I, I, I did a little bit. Not wildly or anything, but yeah. I've never cross-listed anything. I've never had the idea or I've never had the the um, value of things to cross-list, so no. Do you done. list on Depop or other the other platforms at all? I just know? barely made a Depop account maybe like a month ago, and I was yeah, like my blow now how many clothes are on there because I, I thought Depop was like a like a like a Timu website. Oh. I, I thought I that's what I thought it was, bro. I'm like it's so Macari. I have a Macari because I need to buy Funko Pops on there, but Poshmark I don't even have an account on there. Um, what else? Guys, you still with Chloe? So what's cool about the Posh? So if you do cross list, a lot of people don't know this. Um, you can now input your into posh and in posh you can input up to 500 items in your whatnot shop which is cool oh so i heard you, that i heard yeah, it yeah try, yeah so which is which is which is nice especially someone like you who sells clothes something to look keep in mind um yeah for me when i, when I do cross this i cross this to posh and i cross this to macari and i depending on the item i don't change the price on majority of my items but i mean if i have something on ebay for like Eight bucks. I'm gonna cross. I mean, I'm gonna raise the price on Posh and, and uh, Macari, the other platforms, because they charge a higher fee, you know. Um, but I, I'm trying to, you know. I mean, that's some, some of my older items. Um, but I mean, I do raise the price maybe a buck or two on on Posh because they they are higher. Gonna gonna probably get hit with an extra about five percent on Posh compared to what I what I list on eBay. Because if I'm list on eBay, if I do a two or three percent promotion on it, and I'm gonna get hit with third what twelve point nine percent fees. I mean, Posh is going to hit me with 20% right across the thing. So, yeah, I would increase somewhat on Posh. Unless it's something that I have. Majority of my items, I do have, you know, I get 10 to 20 cents on the dollar. So, you know, some stuff I just want to remove. So I don't change it. Plus, I don't want to take the time to change it. It's only certain items, so. Okay. Yeah, so I cross-post to Posh Mercari as well. I do not change my prices, and that's more for ease of use than anything else because my 75 year old mother is who cross posts for me. We did on Etsy, we increased the price by 20%. So it was more expensive on Etsy, but I closed my Etsy shop. We just weren't getting enough sales to make it worth it. Um, so Posh and Mercari, I leave mine where they're at just for ease of use because my mom wouldn't know like some of them should be higher and some of them should not. And I think it would just complicate things a little too much for her we have two super chats the campers great find sent a 4.99 super sticker thank you so so much and miss elizabeth sent us a five dollar one dalton which one would you like to give them look over here dalton just came back in he went inside did you get band-aids yeah that's what i thought i got how to get two two okay which one there's the beach that dolphin pick one the pillow fight the pillow fight. The pillow fight. All right, here you go. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yes, that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to... I got footage on the GoPro at Renninger's this weekend, Dalton and Miss Susan, who is George the Antique Nomad's friend he does the show with, where uh, me and George are sitting there talking, and then here goes, Susan is in her 60s, here's Susan and Dalton running by with pillows out of the camper, having a pillow fight down the dirt and, aisle. And, 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 and what? I was doing it at her, and it, then I was getting it again the same day. Yes. Yeah. So we might have to put a Miss Susan and Dalton pillow fight up there too. They were, I'm like, what is going on? Here they go. Pillow fighting down the aisle. Yep. It was yeah. very silly. All right. <laughs> I know Patty, I know you answered her in chat, Troy. I saw you answered her, but yeah. Troy is starting his new business. So I wanted you to let everybody else know where you're going to be doing that. I saw you answered her. I knew the answer, but do you want to tell everybody? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be um, it'll be on high bid using their platform, which is a, a nationwide online auction. Um, 
it uh you know it, so stuff will be available to sort of preview and watch on on there for like three weeks or something and then the auction will go live on one day when actual bids are coming and you can pre-bid and stuff like that but yeah it'll be on high bid and so we're right now taking consignments of collections and stuff like I'm, we're working on a video game collection that's super huge and high end um d different things like that you know uh, video games vintage clothes you know homestead stuff whatever so yeah we're, we're taking consignments and um doing it through high bid can you so you can if you follow the 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 store i guess on facebook it's bella b-e-l-l-a peacock vintage you could follow the store and then once we have that all up and going and everything's established there'll be an announcement on there on on the facebook page of when it's for sure we have a website but it's not actually active yet and stuff so i can't send you to the website quite yet all right troy you're very popular tonight hamster buns wants to know what's the story with your i'm your huckleberry sign i i found it at a garage sale and i, I couldn't leave it behind i love i love the movie i love tombstone and uh so yeah it, ju it just wound up in here that's like a Wait, it's over there. It's on a like explosives crate that used to carry dynamite, and uh, you know, I've, I've got the prospector, and you know it's it's my mountain man uh, cave. You know I got to have mountain man stuff in here. Oh, Miss Patty said she sent it to my Yahoo. I will check again. So she won the tape, but she wants to gift it to a new reseller. Okay. So I will find us a new one. I'll look, Miss Patty. I'll look again and make sure I didn't get it. Miss Rosie wants to know how do the panelists store fragile or breakable inventory like plates and artwork? I buy as little of it as I can help myself because of that reason. Like I, I have like a shelf over here above my shipping table and I put it up there. And then I also have like a bookshelf and a, you know, a shelf over there because you can't throw it in tubs and totes like everything else. Right. So I do have a couple of shelving units that I store that on, but I don't tend to buy a ton of it. Uh, so for me, I have these the area to store it is full. I try to cut myself <laughs> off. No, sorry. So I have loggers behind me that I use and file cabinets. Um, especially if it's something that's super fragile that I know that I could break it if I'm not careful with it. I, after I'm done listening, after I'm done, you know, taking pictures of it, I actually like bubble wrap it already, get it kind of pre-packed already. And then I have a knowledge like of where I put it at already. So I, I lose that thought of breaking it, if, if that makes sense, you know. So I invest in good storage, that's for sure, you know. Don't be shoving it in your closet thinking that's going to be safe. Don't shove it where the kids won't get to and stuff like that because every time you think that, it's going to break regardless, you know. Well. I'm a closet shover guy uh, <laughs> over here. Uh, I do put some stuff in the closet on, on top shelf here because I got a couple of different rooms that I do that. I do have a, um, a big like little storage warehouse where I do put stuff in. So because I, I don't pull my orders from there, I only go there when I need to pull inventory or need to, you know, um, you know, take stuff to the auction house or just move stuff. I, I keep it there. I was keeping stuff in my garage and where I, I do pull orders and I did break stuff. I broke multiple things this year. So I'm trying to not keep items there. That's tough. You know, especially that's why I, people always give me a hard time in my comments on my YouTube videos. Like, why don't you pick up the glassware? Why don't you pick up this, this, because I break it all I the time. Be yeah. And I don't, I don't have a good, like, like art has that beautiful thing in the background where you just put stuff on there. I don't have that kind of setup at this point in time. You know, so I, I when I eventually do get that set up and get a better place for it, then I will once I clear out some merchandise. So I'm going to defy what everybody said, and we just stack it on shelves, guys. And that includes $100, $200, $300 items. Um, we have stuff break, I would say, once a year. I'm going to knock on wood. If that, um, I do have a display shelf. Some of my really high-end stuff will go there. But the majority are on like the sturdy, like the thick black plastic shelves from Walmart. And I will put like plates on the bottom and then there'll be a bowl on top of it. And there might be a little figurine inside of it. So it's kind of layered. It's not where it's like wobbly, but they are just on the shelves. I have 6,000 items. If I packaged them like art did, I would need like five more sheds. Um, oh no, that's just, it still makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just, I wouldn't have the room. Um, 
I some of them go inside of bankers boxes, but we might put them inside there with clothes. So like the clothes are kind of cushioning the breakable items that are in there. So they're honestly everywhere. I have a couple of videos on my sheds because we have three sheds and now a rent <laughs> my rental house is also full of inventory. Um where you can go and see and it looks like a hot mess but we find stuff when it sells so <laughs> it is labeled we know where it's at but it it it's not pretty but it doesn't need to be i just need to be able to keep the stuff safe and find it when it sells you know um and that stacking it like that is fine <laughs> yeah like See, we're not, we're not here. Um, very, very rarely does stuff get broken. I even, and I think it's been over three years since I made this video. I bought out a booth of antiques. Yes, it's organized chaos up in Georgia. And they thought I was nuts. And I'm talking like hundred, 200, $300 breakables in the trunk of my car. And I layered them with a quilt in between four layers high in my trunk, not one piece broke on the way home from Georgia, not the best roads. And the people there are like, there was their eyes when they're walking by my car as I'm like layering stuff with a quilt um, and thrift stores. I'll be like, no, don't wrap it. I just set it in my car. I, I just, I, I used to show when I like loaded stuff like that and I got so much crap from people, but like I it's, it's worked. I haven't, if I, the first time I break like a $500 piece, I guess I'll probably learn. Maybe I still, I still you're not gonna blame learn. it on Let's be honest, Kat, you're not going to learn. You're just like, Maybe you're not. like, you're not. Accepted to the rule. I, it worked for me this long. I'll just go back to keep doing it. Sam, Sam, Sam's like, don't you want them to wrap it? They don't, but I'm like, no, just like I bought t-shirts, put it in the shirts. Like the shirts cushion it, you know, like, yeah. So I, I don't baby my stuff. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth said for a beginner, what platform would you suggest? I mean, maybe local Facebook marketplace, you know, I mean, that might be the absolute easiest, right? Because you don't have to worry about the shipping. The shipping is the hardest part of reselling. I think is you're going to make the most mistakes there. Um, but in terms of just using the platform, I think Mercari, well, the first thing I set up was actually Poshmark. Um, I had a friend, a reseller friend when I got started that helped me set up my Poshmark account. It's pretty easy. Mercari also is super easy. I haven't listed on there yet, but I'm hearing district is super easy as well. So e eBay is probably the most complicated, um, but it, it, it's not hard to learn. It just takes time and it's a business that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to pay for your mistakes. You just hope that you don't pay that much and you don't want to make that mistake again. Yeah. I guess it depends what kind of, what kind of uh beginner you want to be. I mean, if you want to start flipping things right away, like if you need money today, selling locally on Facebook market would be amazing. You know, Facebook, Facebook is amazing on selling things right away. Uh, but if you got to sell online, if you want to start shipping things, Macari, because I, I have sold things on Macari and it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool of how like simple it is. Like literally click here, click there, click there. It's mm -hmm. literally telling you if you sell it for $8, this is where you're going to make out the fees and shipping. Uh, this is how you're going to print your shipping label out. Uh, take this. Uh, I, I don't even know what it is anymore, but I remember back then it was like um, show them a QR code back is out don't know if it's still yeah. like that. Isn't it like literally you're able to go to the post office show yes, them a QR code and they get you the print label. Like that, like I, that, that's, what's really cool because I remember when I first started making YouTube videos, I used to tell people to start on Macari, even though I sold like maybe like 15 things on there. But I just remember thinking like how easy it was. So Macari is probably the easiest one to start with. Um, eBay is eBay's the king, you know, like all the eyeballs are on eBay. You know what I mean? If you're willing to make those mistakes, if you're willing to pay the cost of shipping, like you're going to make all the mistakes, but you won't make them. You won't make them the fourth time. You're going to make them twice. You're going to make them three times. But eBay is the best one. But if you want to start off easy, Macari. I know I went off all over the place on that. But yeah, no, no you're fine. That's a good answer, man. No, I'm fine. No, just I mean, the both local. I mean, when you flip something local, it's easy. Just take a picture of it. And you can communicate and talk to the buyer. You see them in person. But I always say like Macari is probably the is the most simplistic platform to list on. So I would say Macari is middle school, eBay is high school level, and Amazon is college level. If you want to start selling different different levels there. But 
I would say eBay is the 800 pound gorilla in the room, meaning that it's going to give you the most bang for your buck. It's going to put the most viewers in front of your items. And it's one of the oldest platforms out there to resell on. So it's, it's the OG platform. So I, you know, I would say eBay, if you can sell on eBay, you can sell on Poshmark, you can sell yep. on Macari. But if you want something very simple, Macari is very simple to list on, but it, it's not going to give you as many eyeballs as eBay will. So eBay is the second biggest platform behind the, uh, Amazon. So my recommendation is always eBay or sell local, Facebook or offer up. Um, but Macari is very simplistic. So if you if you want something very simplistic, if you're not if you're very challenged when it comes to technology, Macari is very simple to list on. But I think it matters what you sell too, because not everything yes. sells well on Mercari. That's true. Um, but I agree with everything Rod said. I say tackle eBay, learn the hardest first, and then the others are going to seem like a piece of cake if you're wanting to do this as a business for continual extra income. If it's every once in a... Mercari, in my experience, it either sells in the first week or so or it doesn't yeah. sell. Yeah. Um, and you have to refresh the listing or drop the price to like bump it to the top. Um, but like hats like my boxes have been selling on all three platforms um toys electronics seem to do better over on mercari um but like my glass and breakables i don't sell a ton of on mercari but i do sell them on posh when posh is easy as far as the listing and shipping as well where you're not having to figure out as much as ebay so i would say if your goal is long term to sell i would tackle ebay if it's shorter and you're just like trying to clear out some stuff in your house, maybe Mercari would be the better one or Facebook marketplace. I'm banned. So I can't suggest that because I'm not allowed to sell there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to put this up. So if you guys missed this, um, this happened, that was, this did happen. I had a $3,000 statue blow off of a cart. It was the most expensive in a high bid lot. And so what I did is I rolled their cart out to my car to load my car. I was bubble wrapping the $3,000 statue to transport it. I will say that the wind, it was so light, blew it off and shattered the most expensive piece. And I glued it back together and I actually sold it um, for like 800. So I, I made my money back plus a little bit, but <laughs> So the, the, the key takeaway to that is don't load a hybrid lot outside if there are light items that could blow over and it's windy in Florida. What That's kind of statue was that? It was, I think it was an ACDC or an Aussie Osborne. Um, oh, I still have one Aussie left. Uh, I got there, um, that auction in Daytona, I got like $3,000 Capa Di Monte statues from as well. Um, Disney Capa Di Monte. What's the brand of those toys, Rod, that I just sold? McFarlane. McFarlane. Yeah, I got a bunch of McFarlane. Um, I got a bunch of ACDC, Ozzy Osbourne. Um, it was like a limited edition one of, I want to say a thousand, but there were none listed. So my broke one even sold. But that was the only sucker that blew off the cart was the most expensive piece that was on it. It was like, I was like, Oh, like watching it. It was it was not not fun at all. Rebecca wants to know, can you modify the cost of shipping after the item is sold? I would say I'll just answer this. The answer is if you're asking and you can clarify in the chat, if you're asking if you can charge the buyer more because you didn't charge them enough, the answer is no. Um, on Poshmark, you're good up to five pounds. Mercari, you cannot change it at all. You would have to cancel the transaction and resell the item. Uh, but if you just ship it, you Mercari will charge you the difference and it comes out of your pocket once again. So if you want to clarify for us, um, but if you mean on eBay, that comes out of your pocket. You cannot modify for the buyer to pay more. That is your mistake. And that's like Art said, you might make that mistake a few times, but you're... You're going to eventually learn after it hits your pocket a few times. Rosie wants to know if any of us have contacted eBay regarding algorithm glitches that might be causing slow sales or offers or disappearing listings. Don't and you can answer that as well. And don't even bother. No. <laughs> I mean, 
No, nobody understands the algorithm anyway, even if they work at eBay. It's like the KFC secret ingredients locked in a vault somewhere. <laughs> nobody knows, like, I mean, they, they're not going to know what to tell you. I know they'd say they can, they can like, re refresh your store or something. And some people have said that, I guess that works. But, I mean, I glitches happen. You know, it's just part of part of doing it. The other, what was it, last week there was a glitch going on with eBay where, um, like, I, I accepted somebody's offer and it said, okay, you accept the offer. And then it never followed up with that next item is sold. So I got the message that the offer had been accepted, but the item was still actually listed for sale. And so then I contacted the buyer and said, Hey, I accepted your offer, but on my end, it's not showing that it went through and it's still available. They said, yeah, I, I didn't get a confirmation either. So I just pulled it down, relisted it. They sent a new offer and that time it worked. You know, so it's just you, you work around glitches. They're annoying, but on eBay they just happen. And so I'm not I'm not gonna f fight a losing battle. I, I'm just gonna keep listing and making money. You know, I'm not gonna worry about stuff I can't control. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't even bother with uh, calling eBay. Let's. Yeah, I, I've I've met people that they've told me stories about algorithms and like if you got to post every day. Like they have a timer of what of how they set their stuff, and I don't listen to none of it. I think just post good stuff, price add, great price, and you're good. That's my algorithm, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's as the biggest thing is the secret sauce is posting up items that are at a reasonable price for the marketplace. I mean, I listen. I, I've there's so I will tell you, I've had a weirdest glitch that keeps happening in my store. And I want to know if anyone else here in the chat has had this go on, but I sold this game, Red Dead Redemption, for PS4. I've sold it five times now in the past year, and I've only had two copies of it. Somehow the, the thing keeps getting relisted in my store, and it keeps selling. And literally, I just sold it last month, and I sold it this month, and I don't have the game, and I do not relist it myself, but it keeps getting relisted somehow. And it's got to be a glitch. I can't figure out what's going on with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been selling on eBay since 1999. I started selling what, like, I was a er very early adapter with eBay. And I will tell you this their system is so antiquated and it's so outdated compared to all the other platforms out there. And, but you also have to remember, like, as all of us are individual sellers, we can change in like that. We can change our business style. We can change how we list. We can change how we do stuff. When you're the biggest reselling platform, you know, out there, you have 100 and 135 million users on there. They're, they make one change, it screws up the whole system, and it has to relearn, and it has to go through there. And they they're, when they put it out, they test it out, go through. No matter how many times they test it, their their system is very antiquated, so they they keep having a lot of issues throughout time. That's how it's always been on eBay. Unfortunately, there's nothing that we can really do about that. You just have to adapt and change, and that's why selling other platforms is is has been very crucial for a lot of people. Because this year, I've heard more problems with eBay than I ever had when it comes to like slow selling, come to issues with listing, uh, issues with the platform. So you just have to adapt to it. I mean, it's just part. It's part of selling. You know, you have your highs and lows. You just got to deal with it. No sense of wasting time. It's things you can't control. You've been selling since '99 on eBay. I mean, I started. Me too. High yeah. How, Rod, how old are you, bro? I'm forty. <laughs> You're forty. Yeah. 40. yeah. '99. I was. Barely four, no, barely five. <laughs> yeah, that means so, we're old, Rod. Yeah, so yeah, when, you're about to be older, incidentally. So breaking in, happy birthday! <laughs> my birthday, yes, my birthday is Sunday. My birthday is Sunday. So our, or Monday. Monday. I don't know. Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. Yours is Monday because mine is on Sunday. When yeah, me and Kat, Troy and I are a day apart. Well, nice Good birthday neighbors. When me and Cat first started selling eBay, or you would we would receive money orders. In the mail, we see checks in the mail that you had to wait Gosh. seven to ten days to they clear. And I would get like envelopes wrapped in like paper towels, aluminum foil, <laughs> like filled with cash. Like you thought I was a drug dealer. They were like things that would come yeah. like hidden in stuff. Like I had people from England send me cash internationally, like U.S. cash internationally to ship stuff overseas. Like it was nuts back in the day. Weird, that's crazy. Like yeah. I remember buying something on eBay when I was like in, I want to say like in sixth grade, like oh six. And then I remember showing my dad, like, Dad, I think this is how we do it. And I remember my dad was thinking, like, is this a real website? And <laughs> yeah. God, like, yeah. yeah I, I remember when were you, what year were you born, Art? I was born in 94. So, like, I'm not. So I'm I not graduated in 96. 
Um, excuse me. She graduated I graduated 96. from high school in '96. Oh, you graduated in '96. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. My my oldest son was born in '99. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you could be. He's very close to being my kid. And then I have the little, little baby. <laughs> But the cool thing, and I'm actually going to put this question up now um, because I think it pertains to this. So we're talking about that, which there, there's not a giant age difference here in between us. But Miss Judith is saying she's 72. So if you were seven, 72, Troy, if at 72, would you attempt to do this? Yeah, why not? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and... Let's be honest. At seventy-two, you know a lot more about a lot more stuff than Art does over here. Art yeah. does than, than any of us do. Oh, right? yeah. You know, no, oh, dude, it's just hot. You know what to be looking for. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it it depends, I suppose, on your learning curve on electronics and, and the internet and that sort of thing, right? Like, I, I I've got some older relatives that are like they don't know how to set up their TV, and others that are better at that stuff than I am. So, I mean, I there may be a learning curve, but yeah. yeah. I can't wait until I'm 72. Like the knowledge that I'm, that I'm going to know when I go to a garage sale, <laughs> it'd be insane. Like even right now, when I go to garage sales, I'm like, Oh, I know that's worth something. That's worth something. That's worth something. I could only imagine how excited it's going to be. Like, oh, and at yeah. Goodwill, you get the senior citizen discount. So you're already making money. Oh, I could oh yeah. Up. Yeah. All the thrift stores. Yeah. Listen, yeah. And the best part is you can just act like you're blind, whatever. You can just knock people over, just take the items whenever you want them and just say, Oh, I'm old. Don't worry about it. No, but no. all joking aside, absolutely. Start when you're 70. Listen, I'm you only as old as you feel. And also, too, is like you watch so many people as they get older, is when they stop doing things, is you know, you start to see a big decline. So keep your mind fresh, give you something to look forward to, be excited. Like go out, go treasure hunting. I mean, that's honestly the reason I quit my job, I do this full time. Because I'm literally, I'm, I call myself a modern day treasure hunter. It's the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. Going out, not just finding items, but also getting functional. Look at this, knowledge. guys. Look at oh, this. Look, there you go. Yeah. 70, 71, 76. Yeah. Started eBay at 64. 100% yeah. do it. Kevin, I had somebody at my eBay camp that was 84 starting. 84. Like, how cool is that? And I she had her computer. So, like, the technology part in my experience with helping people in your age range start, the technology has been the hardest thing for them to overcome and learn. But if you want to do it, I believe you can do it. There are videos out there to walk you through step by step. I have several. Scott Cha-Ching King has some amazing ones for beginners. So oh, yeah. That's true, yeah. Absolutely, I say do it. If you want to do it, do it. Yeah. yeah, the computer the computer is the issue typically that I see. Um, I will tell you, a lot of my audience is in your age range that is doing it. Um, my primary demographics is ladies fifty five to seventy five. So, like at my camp, we had a lot of ladies in their sixties and seventies doing this. So, a hundred percent, I say do it. And I say you guys are cheating in the chat trying to put hashtag GR back in my go to tape. Because I haven't even said anything about a giveaway. You use people behave. You don't even know what the funny thing is. I have something I didn't even tell Rod. I have something new that we're giving away tonight. And none of you know the hashtag because none of you know we're doing it because we've never done it before. He is super, super late. That should be like 20 bucks, not 10. Mark said a $10 super chat because he's late and I'm going to give him Rod. That's what he gets every time he's late. He gets Rod. Here you go. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time. All right. We we will we will do a giveaway. Um I am going I don't have any more tape. I don't have any more tape. I forgot to message Joel. I will message Joel. Um but I was talking to somebody else who is one of my affiliates and I said, "Hey, do you want to give me a free month to give away on my show tonight? And they said, yeah, and they are wonderful. So we are giving away and I will open the, the stream yard thing here in a minute. We are giving away a month of my reseller genie for somebody. And I should have an amazing, I'm going to put 
my link here for you guys as well. So let me get it started and we will do hashtag my reseller genie. I'm not collecting yet. Don't do it. Okay, now it's there. Let me share. So hashtag my reseller genie will win a free month. That is an amazing software for accounting for resellers that pulls in your eBay sales. They have analytics. They have all of the fun things. And oh, we clicked this button. Rod taught me. We clicked this one. There we go. Um, here is my link. And if you use code, the nurse flipper, you, I believe you will get a discount off the first month. Um, perfect time to start now coming into the new year, guys. If you didn't keep track of your stuff, you're going to have a pain in the butt. Come tax time, start it now. <laughs> start it now, not next year. Um, uh, Cassandra, I believe they, if the winner already has it, I believe they will credit it. That is what List Perfectly typically does for us. They, they do credit the winner if you are already a subscriber of theirs. I do not foresee any trouble with that. Um, but I am not a hundred percent. I did not ask them if that happened. Um, so there is that. We also last week, um, and I need to post my link tree. I never, how do I here? Uh, copy. I'm going to post my link tree for you guys because I have a lot of different resources, including um, Casey's. We just put up pro e-commerce lister. If you don't want to do your listings, he'll list by your pictures. And now's the time of year for Mark II's Reseller Tax Academy too. It is that time of year. If you want to learn and start the new year right. So my link tree has all of my links and all of my codes for the discounts. Um, I am out of tape, so we will not be giving away tape, but we will be giving away GRO pack after this. GRO pack gives us two sets of follies every show because they are amazing. But I do want to announce um, GRO pack is no longer giving 10% off after the first order, guys. Um, they said their profit margins are very slim, and so you will get 10% off if you are a new buyer but you won't get 10% off after that. And they are the lowest priced anyways. So I, I don't blame them. The same with American Bubble Boy. There's no discount code because his profit margin is very, very slim. Joel doesn't have a lot of wiggle room there. So that's, but we do get 5% on tape. We get 5% off on tape. Um, and all, again, all those codes are on my link tree. If you click on that, how many entries do we have? 54. All right. I'll go ahead. Let's pick a winner and then we'll do some polys. Dun, da, da, da. And let me see what she told me. Guitar, Missy, you got it. Let me see what she told me. She said to email her support at myresellergenie.com and, and tell her that you won the free month on cats podcast my support at my reseller genie.com yay missy all right let's do two gro packs and then we will get back to your questions cat we even got one question about whatnot tonight that's weird i know we usually have a question about what right. it's up guys hashtag gro pack we'll go ahead let's enter let's answer another question um chance says I found an ant. Did we both click it? Yep. <laughs> I found an antique wicker platform rocker today for forty dollars. I think it is worth hundreds, maybe over a thousand dollars. Doing my research, my issue is shipping. I've never shipped anything like this. She's asking, would you use you ship? I'm no help there because I would leave that stuff because I don't know and don't want to figure out how to ship it. Though now I'm buying bigger things because I can put them in my vintage booth, which has been nice. But yeah, I I don't know. I think I I see you ship um, like Bradford Hamilton uh, is a guy that does like Ethan Allen for man. That guy knocks it out of the park and he won't make videos. He makes so much. I know he's incredible. He ships he ships furniture all over the place, and I think that's who he uses. But in, it in is. It is. How to set it up? I, I, I don't know. I have no idea what you ship is, so I'm the last person to say that. Um, for something like that, why would you use Facebook Market? Sell it locally if you can. The thing about that, you're gonna wait a while, you know. But 
I, I wouldn't know how to ship that at all. Yeah, for me, I would say you ship as a platform that if you have bigger items, you ship as a company that's like a freight company. You can ship stuff freight. They'll come pick it up, box it up, and they'll ship it out for you. Um, yeah, but I mean, I would say probably you ship might be your, your best bet for that. I would probably try to sell it locally. Um, I would I would even take you know fifty cents of the dollar just to, to move it locally and not have to deal with it. To be honest with you, if that was me personally. If I bought it for a good price, um, like forty bucks, and just f- make a quick flip and move it, and not have to deal with it, yeah. and have someone else make the profit and try to sell it online. To be honest with you, but that's probably the route I would go instead of having to you know go through you ship and everything else. But what's the biggest things you ship, Rod? That I have shipped cats. Cats shipped all kind of crazy big things. What's the biggest thing you shipped? So, cats? the last thing I shipped was a three thousand dollar painting. It was um, four feet by four feet that it sold for three thousand on eBay. Um, and before that was a three thousand dollar one of those Disney statues. I was saying was at that same auction that went whoop. Um, but and I've also shipped Ethan Allen hutches. I shipped an Ethan Allen dresser. So somebody's asking how you integrate it. You cannot integrate you ship with eBay. So what you need to do is you put um, flat rate freight and I tell them they have to email me with their zip code. And I guesstimate because I've shipped so many things. Uh, I believe you ship will give you a quote, but it takes a few days. So like, for that painting, it was delivered from here to Massachusetts for $300, and it got there in one day, faster than UPS, and that's yeah. actually what I charged them for UPS, and I messaged them and said, do you mind if I have it hand-delivered instead, and they said no, um, but like for that same painting to go to California, I would have expected to pay $800 to 1000 so you got to, like, if you're if you're in the middle of the country, you're lucky, but like our, you're on the West Coast. So if somebody in Florida bought Sorry. something, it would be so expensive. Expensive. Huh? What was that? <laughs> don't know. Troy, what was know. that? I don't know. So hit a button, maybe. So, so yeah, like, um, you can, yeah, it used to be really easy. They would give you quotes and show you like the averages. I don't think they do that anymore. You also could tell them to um, that they can book the freight on you ship themselves and pay. So a lot of sellers make the buyers and a lot of people, if they're buying a lot of furniture, they're familiar with the freight, you know, like how freight works. All right, let's pick our two winners. So for GRO Pack, if you don't know, what you'll do is go to GROPack.com, pick out which poly mailers you want, the color, the size, and then email me, the nurse flipper at yahoo.com with what you want and your mailing address. So let's see who's going to win. We're going to give away two packs. You can pick whatever size and color you want, padded or non, and they will mail it to you. Dun, 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 dun. Miss Marty is winner number one, and let's pick another winner. Marsha, will you type that in the, the chat for me, the instructions? Let's draw it again. Dun, da, da, da. Finders, keepers first. Miss Eileen, you got the second one. So congrats to both of you guys. Marsha will put it down there. And so art, as far as like local resale, it depends on where you're at. Like, I think if you're where Rod is, like Rod's down in South Florida, further South Florida than I am. He's in Tampa. I think like local flips there would be easier. I am in the middle of nowhere and all major cities are two hours from me. So like if I tried to sell this rare mid-century modern rocker, these people would look at me like I lost my mind. <laughs> like it wouldn't sell. See, for you, um, you're in Vegas, so it would yeah. be nice for it you. It would be you know, so you're... easy, yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. Like, that's a big area. Like, I'm two hours from any airport, Art, to give you an idea. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. yeah. Here, like, so my experience on Facebook Market, if I post something that's really good and I price it, normally, if I pri- if I post something on Facebook Market and I'm normally post- posting a really good price, it'll sell within a couple hours. Yeah. 90% of the posts, yeah. yeah. 
So, yeah, yeah Marsha posted my link tree, guys. And I, Marsha, will you add that to what we drop? I always forget about that because that's everything condensed all into one. And you guys can see all of the links, like my Amazon, what I like recommend for shipping scales and jewelry supplies and everything is in that. And like, I don't, we don't ever drop that. Francois wants to know, is anybody experiencing month slump of no sales? I was banging sales before. Do you think it's inflation? And what what do you think in the chat as well as on the panel? I mean, are we saying no sales like in zilch or are we being uh, like hyperbole here? Because going to zero for a month seems like there's something wrong. I had a couple months, the last month month and a half has been really good for me but there was about a month and a half two months before that where things weren't great you know it was a little bit lean i mean ebay is a roller coaster you know it goes up and down sometimes with no way to tell why you know i was looking at it going i still have good stuff i'm still listing good stuff i just wasn't selling all that much at all and then all of a sudden things picked up again you know so i i i think it would be disingenuous to say that the economy has nothing to do with it but there are still people with money still buying. I sold a GI Joe today for $105. You know, that's not something anybody needs. You know, I'm not out there because a lot of people will say, well, just sell the, the needs and not the wants. The, the people that want stuff, maybe they're not as many of them have money, but they're still people that have money and are still buying $100 GI Joe figures. You know, they're, they're still out there. So I... I, I don't think we just hang our head and go, well, the economy's in the toilet, so we're not going to sell anything. I, I, I think you're still okay. It might not be the fourth quarter that we're used to, but I think it's going to be good. Oh, that's a really good answer. Like, eBay is definitely a roller coaster. Like, I remember a lot, November was such a great month for me. October is a really good month, and December has definitely died down for me. Um, I don't think it's inflation. I, don't, I think that's just an excuse that a lot of people have. Um, it's... I don't want to sound like I don't want to be the negative person or anything like that, but like you know, double check your listings, double check you know how you got your things going. That might be the problem, you know. Um, I, I don't know, Rob. What else can you say to that? No, I mean it's. I think there's it's it's a twofold question. There's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, what I mean, yes, it, it's my my sales are definitely down right now. I would tell you that compared to last year at this time, but it's also that's self reflection of myself because I'm focusing more on whatnot and it's taking time away from my eBay store. Um, also too, I, you know, this is, there's other factors at play. It's not just like inflate. People always want to blame it on inflation and everything else. But for example, I sell, I sell a lot of high end comic books. Well, the comic book market is, is based off pop culture. It's based off what is coming out in the, the TV shows and the movies here in the future. Well, what just happened for the past three, four months, there was a writer strike and an actor strike in, in everything. So all so when people speculate on like comic books, like, hey, Fantastic Four was supposed to come out in 2024, and now it's coming out in 2025. Well, all those people that were waiting and anticipating that that come out, there's going to be no news out for another year. That gets pushed back. Well, that, my stuff's going to stay stagnant, you know, just because out of sight, out of mind. Um, so there are other factors that do play into it, especially if you sell pop culture stuff. The writer's strike and the actor's strike had a big impact on putting out movies, TV shows that's going to relate to your products, you know. So uh, – you know, that's factors of taking consideration, but you know, there's a lot more competition out there too. It's not just eBay anymore. You know, whatnot. You have district that's coming up right now. That's a whole nother selling platform. Um, you have Bakari, you have Posh, you know, Depop. I mean, it's, there's Grail. There's so many other platforms out there that, you know, so you guys have to be creative with your listings. You have to price things right. You know, on eBay before is, you can price it anything you wanted as long as your item was in great condition. You're going to price it above the market, and it was the best item out there. More than likely, you're probably going to sell it at a higher price. And it was not always like that anymore on eBay. So it's definitely more competition here. But I think a lot of us are going through it right now. You just you just got to adapt and change. I and mean, we always say that and preach it on here. Which is why you got to promote, Rod. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a screen. Cause I believe in complete transparency and I think you guys should vet the YouTubers you watch and make sure they are selling what they say they're selling if you're learning from them. So here is my current screen right now. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. We're at almost $4,000 for the week. 
We are at 17,000 for the month and we are up 67.5%. So just where you're seeing it, this is like current right this second for me. Now, the thing is, is maybe what you sell isn't selling anymore. And if you continue listing what's not selling, you're not gonna get sales. So sometimes you gotta stop, take a look at what you're selling and if it's not selling, find different stuff. Or the market you know, is not selling for as much. I mean, it could still be selling, but it, right. the market went down. But stuff's priced too high. Yeah, Sunny's saying always adapting. We were putting a majority of time into whatnot for the last year, and eBay fell to 5000 a month, which for us is horrible. That is absolutely horrible. Now we are back at 17000 which around this time last year, we were close to 20,000. So we are back almost where we were. Plus I still am selling on whatnot, just not as much. So it's this, you know, you, you put the effort into where you see the returns. And if you're not seeing the returns, find something else to sell or check the prices like Troy said. Teresa's saying, try in and sell similar. I do that as well. Not as much since sales have picked up, I won't lie. When my sales were really low, I was ending and selling similar every day, yeah. items that were three months or older. Now I'm not doing that as often because my sales are there. Um, but I think a lot of people have stores like mine. I only have a 12% sell through rate. I will tell you on my 6,000, but you see I'm making the money. We will probably end up close to 175 this year on eBay, 175,000. Um, what not is probably going to be close to that as well. And you, you really have to take a look like, like, the, Troy was saying, like, saying it, it's, oh, it's the economy. Not like, no, like, if you want to make the sales, you can make the sales. You just got to figure out what to sell or what to change. Something is selling. Something is selling. I guarantee you it's selling. And everybody in this panel, too, has been able to adapt and change. Like, even though my eBay sales are down, I'm making more money on whatnot selling, you know, on doing other shows. Like, art, arts, if you guys ever watch arts, whatnots. He went from from listing everything now doing pop ups where he's just pulling items and doing that because he can sell more that way. They make more money. Troy's shifting to to an, an auction house from a, he's shifting from selling online. Now he has a booth also selling it, uh, making an auction house. So, we, you know, it's not that we're not being successful in what we're doing. We're shifting and adapting as we go because this is what we have to do to survive because we're all full time. Yeah. And I think that's right. a lot of people get caught. A lot of people get stuck in their ways because, like you guys said, is what was working a year ago may not be working. You're like, I still have good items. I'm still listing. I'm listing consistently, but it's not selling because like Troy just said, the market changes. Markets change a lot. Yeah. And you have to adapt and change. And sometimes, you know, you know, there's so many items that I used to sell. I don't sell anymore because the market either got flooded or this, the demand's not there anymore. Or maybe it was, you know, it was something with pop culture going on at the time. Like, you know, stranger things come on and you see an item there. Now everyone wants that item. And now, Roseanne, you know, you had the blanket on the on the back of the of the couch. That everyone wanted, couch? you know, like yeah. So. I just bought a jacket like that. I hope it sells. Um, <laughs> yeah, my numbers you, you, aren't that numbers, but I'm up twenty seven point three percent. So I mean, people are buying stuff. And I do want to say, like, I, you saw my numbers. I also have a giant payroll, guys. I have employees. Um, I do have employees. It is not just me. So remember that. And I would be happy to hand over my payroll bill to you if you would like to match it. Um, <laughs> it's like my pay, my payroll is well over a thousand dollars a week. A lot of times, 1500 a week for my employees between whatnot and eBay. And that is super stressful to those of you that think you want help. Imagine not only worrying about your bills, but worrying about five other people's bills who are employees of you. Um, but it's what it's what I want to do. And I love it because most of my employees are family that needed jobs and needed the money. Like my 21 year old in nursing school can work around. She doesn't have to worry about her schedule. She helps me with whatnot. And she's making decent money. My mom, who is 75, Brad's aunt, who is 76, both work for me. You know, and they're, you know, semi-retired but needed income and what I had to go do. My mom was talking about working at a friggin' gas station. I'm like, Mom, you're not 75. I'm going to work at the gas station. Um, 
So I have kind of dual purpose, you know, growing the business, plus also helping support my family. Um, my listers, I have a 16 year old high school student who's doing it to get high school credits. Um, and a girl I used to work with who's saving money for a prom dress for her stepdaughter. So, I mean, it's super cool, but it's stressful. It is you stressful when it's not just your, your family work and not pay them. I mean, I think his model would work better for you. <laughs> Kevin's? Yeah. Dalton's not on the yeah. payroll yet, but he will be sick. Are you going to work for mommy? Well, then. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, we got a couple super chats. Let me grab these real quick. Miss Cassandra sent ten dollars and said, "Great show as always. Thank you. You are so welcome." And Miss Judy sent us a dollar ninety nine. Miss Judy, do it, do it. Seventy two, eighty two. I don't care, guys. Do it, yep. do it. If you want to, do, it's fun. And a lot of people will tell me like it keeps them active because they're going at the thrift stores, they're going out doing things. You know, you can meet friends in the reseller community too. So definitely do that. I've met a lot of amazing, amazing people from this. We'll go ahead. Let's give you the beach. Here you go. <laughs> oh, mom. He's watching it from back there. Oh, this is a great question. Are you all running a Black Friday sale all week in your store? I'm, uh, I, I, I am sort of with the cat method. You know, I, I have a, a month long, yeah, cat, cat's way more, uh, she ends it after so long and starts it again. And I just run like right now, I think I'm 40% off of things, $20 and over. And then like 10 to $20 is like 20 some percent off. And it just goes for a month. I actually just renewed it. I think yesterday it ran out. So I just started it over. So I'm just always continually running a sale. I, I'm not going to run anything specific for that. I just keep running the sale. Yeah, I, I I I have like you know the regular Q4 sale. I think it's like 30, 40, 30, 40 percent off just to clear out my store. You know, start fresh for the new year. But Black Friday, you know, even me and Rod were doing something or whatnot. Um, a couple weeks ago, I, I was uh, with uh, Dave ADH Dave. We did an eight hour uh, live <laughs> or whatnot, which was so much fun. Like it was honestly a great time doing it. Uh, we're for not those, doing it. yeah What's for those that don't know just background on that dave went from 11 no 10 a.m to 6 p.m and art went from 6 p.m to 2 a.m eastern standard time that's crazy and, uh, it, it was fun though. it was a little tiring but it was fun so on black friday we're doing nothing as crazy as that but i'm doing three hours and i think rod might be doing a couple hours so yeah, so, yeah i'm gonna go first i'm gonna i think i'm gonna go Two to three. I'm either, I'm, I don't know. I'm probably going to do one or two hours, but I'm going to go from like at least two I'm to three. I'm debating. Then, I have one scheduled. I think yeah. I might do one too. Yeah. And then Art's going from three to six Eastern time. And then Kevin's going to go from six to seven. And then I'm probably going to go back on later on and do Disney pins. But I'm going to do try to clear up some stuff in, in my uh, in my warehouse, just blow stuff out, shirts, Funko Pops, toys, other stuff. But I'm going to run a, 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 a sale in my store probably. I don't know. Probably. 20 to 30 percent off majority of my items my store on ebay yeah like so i and if you want to shop my store uh wait and friday i'm bumping my sale up to i think 40 percent off of everything um uh yeah so they just said they are i have one scheduled uh, what time did i schedule it for um i have one scheduled but i'm not I'm not a hundred percent. I'm Ooh. I'm worried there's going to be fifty million people live, and that whatnot's going to crash because they're yes. doing no feed. Oh, don't say they won't crash. I've seen that so many times. <laughs> no, don't tell I, me they won't crash. No, I, that's I said that I had the same conversation with Art earlier today. I was like, I'm a little worried they're going to crash. I think people that are going earlier in the day should be fine, but I can see it crashing like peak time, like eight o'clock at night. I, I have mine that. scheduled at three. I just look, yeah. but I might change it. I just wanted to get one in because I'm yeah. actually going to try cataloging again for two shows with the Sterling Silver. Wait, um, are you doing one on District on Friday with? Uh, no, that's with, Sunday. Oh, Sunday. District gotcha. is Sunday. Okay. Yeah, my District Live is Sunday. Um, yeah, Yvonne saying that could happen. Yeah, Yvonne will be in the live on District Sunday. Um, 
yeah, so we're doing a big live on knickknacks on districts. Um, I actually had a really big sale on districts today. I was super, super happy with a $200 necklace sale over on knickknacks. So, so, so I'm happy with that. Give a little background. Those that don't know, the crazy lamp lady started her own um, district selling market. And that's what Kat's referring to called knickknacks. Yes. So and I, I, I don't have many listings over there. I think I have like 40 something and I've sold three things. Um, but that was the biggest by far. Before that, I just had like $20 sales. So I was super happy to get that one today. Absolute Fines wants to know, how do you handle a transaction when you have lost or can't locate an item after it sells? Do you cancel or message them later and tell them it's lost in the mail and refund them? <laughs> Don't lie, Troy. <laughs> I've done it multiple ways. Like, honestly, like, and so many of the things that I sell are kind of one off. You know, it, it's not like I have another one that I can send to them, right? Or even there might not be another one online. Um, the most recent, I actually had one recently where I just, it was a little cross stitch Christmas ornament. They're all in one spot and in one little tote because I bought them all at the same time, listed them all at the same time. It wasn't in there. I went through it three times. I don't know where it is. And so I messaged them and told them, look, it's just not there. I can't find it. I have a couple others that are similar. If you're interested in those or I'll cancel your order and give you a complete refund. And they actually said, well, yeah, if you have one that's similar, it doesn't matter if it's around the same skill level, just send me one of those. So that was an easy one. I just pulled down another listing and sent it to them. I have basically drop shipped one before, you know, and bought it from another person and, and put their address so, you know, it gets to them that way. And hopefully you just break even that way. You know, I, I try to make the customer whole. You know, they ordered something that they wanted. So I try to find a way to get that to them if I can. So I have a couple of times. I, it doesn't happen often, but over six, seven years or whatever, I have a couple of times purchased it from another reseller and had that go to them. Um. You know, other, otherwise, just be honest. I mean, for the most part, people understand mistakes happen and they're genu uh, generally pretty forgiving in my experience. Um, yeah. So honestly, that's actually happened to me just last night. I sold an RC car that was broken. Um, like the windshield's broken, the hood is broken, but I sold it as for parts. Um, unfortunately, when I shipped it out, I forgot one of the broken parts here in town, you know, oh, here in my garage, I forgot one of the broken parts. So it arrived, the person emailed me, he's like, hey, this piece is actually missing. It's in the listing. I was like, damn it, excuse me, it, it was missing. So I I was just being honest, like, hey, man, I'll just refund you a partial refund, you know. I'm not going to find that piece here in my garage anymore. I probably threw it away. It's gone already. Um, partial refund is probably the best thing I recommend. Um, refund them the cost. Like, I I forgot to put power cables with things that I've shipped out. You know, I refund the, the cost of a power cable. That makes sense, you know. But, um, you know, I, I don't cancel it if I lose something. Just be honest, like how Troy was saying. We're all humans. We all make mistakes. If you lose something, if you break something, just tell them, like, hey, man, this is gone. Like, I'm not going to hold you up three days looking for this. I'm just going to tell you right now. So, I, I agree. Um, you know, we are human. We all make mistakes. I usually – I email the buyer and let them know, say, listen – I have tons of items. Sometimes I get, I literally just before the show, so I had to email to two buyers. I'm like, hey, well, one, I sold the item. And like I told you, I'm having the issue where I've been selling items and somehow it's getting relisted. I still don't know how that's happened to me multiple items this year. Um, it's got to be a glitch. I don't know. Um, but I didn't, item I sold months ago that just sold again. And I was like, email the buyer, say, hey, there was a glitch in the system. I apologize. I, you know, that, that was, that was what really happened. But I had another item where I just, I literally just had it like two or three weeks ago and I was combining totes, you know, because you, you know, you sell a bunch of stuff and then you have like almost got an empty tote and you're like, well, this is a waste of space. So I'm going to change, move all this to something else. Well, I must have moved it to another tote and then change my skew. So I know I have it. I just recently touched it and I, I sent a message by. I said, hey, I'm sorry. And this person bought for me too. So I bought for me in the past, so I feel bad. So I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. I cannot find the item. I can either issue you a full refund for the item or, you know, if you want something else in my store, I give you a discount on a different item in my store because that way the, the buyer's going to give you an answer. Yes, cancel it. Then I can just go in there and say buyer wanted me to cancel the item so my account doesn't get dinged. 
But also, too, I let the buyer know. Say, hey, listen, I know it's here. When I do find it, I'll, I'll send you an email back and let you know I got it. And I'll give it to you at a discounted price, you know, for, for the inconvenience of the situation. But they, both buyers were super cool about things. Um, just be honest, man. Just let them know. I said, nine or ten times they're going to be cool about stuff. Yeah, I do the same as Rod. Um, typically, I will first look and see if I can buy the same thing. Even if it costs me a few dollars more than what I sold it for, um, I will try and buy it and drop ship it. I'll buy it from another seller and send it to them. Um, if it's a one-off and I can't do that, I do what Rod said. I'll email them, tell them I'm sorry, we can't locate it. And sometimes it has been it is double sold and we don't know how that happened. Um, and I just am honest with them and tell them I'll give you a discount of say 20% off of anything else in my store. If you would like me to ship something in its place, or if you prefer, I will issue you a refund. And a lot of times they ask for the refund and I just cancel it um, with buyer asked. And, but I will, I will first try and buy it from somewhere else first. Oh, uh, let's see. I sold an item on whatnot and the weight was incorrect. The buyer paid. I corrected the weight. Um, how do I refund the shipping to the buyer? So if the buyer paid more than it was there, whatnot is taking that. Um, but they also give you five a week that they will eat that if it is over what you expected, they will not charge you. So um, the buyer saw that, what they were paying, and that's that. There's no, you can't issue a refund over on whatnot. All right, let's see. Oh, Miss Miss Kathy just wanted to say thanks. She got her six pack of tape, which she won here from American Bubble Boy and received in less than 48 hours. So they are fast, guys. American Bubble Boy for bubble wrap and tape are very, very incredible with their customer service and their speed. And it gets here fast. Do you remember what kind of tape it's called? Bubble wrap tape. Bubble wrap tape, my go-to tape. So I'm going to have Brooke, my 21-year-old, start helping me. We're going to try and put up some little reels um, just to kind of be more consistent with my Instagram. And I'm hoping she can convince him better than me. You got lipstick oh, on I it. did get lipstick on him. <laughs> um, and so we were, we were trying to get him to say stuff earlier about my go-to tape. So I'm glad it got there fast, guys. They, they Joel is amazing. Julie wants to know what brand of thermal labels do we use? So we said our printers, but what brand of labels are you using in there? I, I don't even know what brand it is. I have a Dymo and I use an off brand, like whatever, whatever, when I run out, I get on, I find the cheapest one on there, honestly, and yes. buy them and just slap them in there. And I have never had a problem with it. I never, I don't even know the brand or anything like that. So I don't think it really matters. I, yeah, I've had no issue either. I just bought, I just buy the cheap one off of Amazon. All right. I'm going to counter what all three of these <laughs> men just said, <laughs> because I go through so many labels. I bought like the cheapest of the cheap and it got stuck in my printer. Like it came off and almost ruined my Dymo, but it was like seriously cheap. So I look, I only know because the box is sitting right here because we go through like a roll every week because of whatnot. So this is the brand we use. This is in my link tree as well, um, Dasher products. So these are not expensive as Dymo, but they're not as cheap as the cheap cheap. Um, I, I bought like a whole case, like 25 rolls. It was like way too cheap. It was the whole like you get what you pay for thing. I learned my lesson, so I would say buy cheap, but beware of the cheap, 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 cheap. Yes, it is worth it for me to stay home with this little pain in my butt who I love. <laughs> Are you a pain in the butt? No. No, he would Just sometimes. Just sometimes. At least he told the truth. Just sometimes. Yeah. I love you. Yeah, so that one, it was crazy. It kept, you know how when it comes out of the printer, it kept getting stuck to the top of it. And it had no perforations to tear the labels. It was horrible. And I put it back in and I returned it to Amazon. I was like, uh uh. <laughs> like, no way. Okay. Finders Keepers, Miss Eileen said, I just lost a $100 plush that sold. It disappeared, which I think we just talked about. This. this is almost exactly what we just answered. 
Um, Except so, that doesn't happen to me. I always lose the five to ten dollar item. Yeah, whenever been, I can't find something, it's literally like it, right? a, ten dollars or under, and I spend ten minutes looking for it and then can't find. I always waste my time on it. Almost every time, it's something that's ten dollars or less. Hundred dollar plus. Hmm. What plus was that? Yeah, I want to know the plus too that you sold for hundred bucks. So yeah, tell us, Miss Eileen. Jelly cat. All I'm right, Jelly Cat. <laughs> yeah, maybe. To Troy, I think he's talking with his hands like you were. I think that's what's going on up there. Hmm. I don't know. I, I just froze actually on my stream yard, so I can't see. Yeah, anything. you look good though. You're good. You're just yeah. You're oh, yeah. just chilling. my laptop just froze. But if I'm still on, I'm on. You yeah. Just, we hear you. We hear yeah, fine. we hear you, but you're yeah. frozen. Like you're completely frozen. You're not even moving. <laughs> Rosie wants to know how many hours a day or week do you work? Are you working more or less or about the same when you work for an employer? Um, I feel like I work besides the last few days. Cause the last two days I took like a real chill day to be with my family. But even my wife says it, I feel like I work all day. As soon as I wake up, I'm doing something. Um, even when I'm making breakfast, I'm like doing more work or even with my kids. I know it sounds bad to be around your kids and working, but like you're doing like mental thoughts. You know what I mean? Like you're, 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 you're doing something. Um, I go to, I don't go to bed late all the time, but you know, I'm honestly, I'm probably working eight to 10 hours a day doing something, you know, like for me, I, I, you know, I make YouTube videos. I'm working on TikToks. Um, I do a lot more editing than I do selling, you know? Um, so I, I spend a lot of time doing that. Um, what not helps me out a lot on that. So I, I stream twice a week on packing. Packing takes me about a couple hours a day as well, you know. So I think I'm working a lot more. Are you yeah, working? I think seven? I work more than I ever did. You work yeah. seven days a week? Seven days a week. Yeah, there's no days off, you know. What I mean? Besides the last two days, you know, just because the weather's been like not bad, but the weather's been bad in Vegas. But you know, this but these are like the first two days off I've taken probably since I don't know, a good couple months now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but the thing is, it's not work. It's it's what I love to do. I could do this all day if I could. You know what I mean? You know, if it weren't for my kids, I I would still be working. Um, you know, that's how I know nobody could beat me because I love what I do. I could do this all day. I can go without eating. I can go out without sleeping because of how much I love doing this. So it, it's not work. I, it's this is what I love to do. You know. Yep. When it comes to the weekend, and I know I'm going garage selling, man, I can go out there with two hours of sleep. If, <laughs> you, know, I was all, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not work. It's. No, it's I'm, just, I'm the same way, man. Like for so when when I work my day job, you know, I try to work as least amount of time as possible. Where other people are trying to put in overtime, and I, I hated my jobs. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I like so I'm the type of person I, I like the people I work with. I, you know, my bosses have always been like super cool, but at the same point in time is I'm making someone else rich and, I, and that drives me absolutely insane. So for me, I work more now than I've ever worked before, but I freaking love every single minute. Just like Art said, I love every minute of it. Like when I was working full time, I, this would people are like, what do you do for fun? I'm like, oh, I sell on eBay. I go garage sale. I go out there. You know, I'm having a great time. Like I'm, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm, you know, listing on eBay, searching things for eBay because I love it. I mean, I love the treasure hunting aspect of it. I love searching for items. Yeah, then I got to list on eBay. You got to ship stuff out. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's the tedious part of what we do. But at the same point in time is I wouldn't want to do anything else. Like I literally, I have five pets in my house. I got three dogs and two cats. My wife goes to work. She works at the hospital. She's gone sometimes for 14 hours a day. And it's just me and the pets. And, you know, my stepson's here too. And I... We would not trade that for anything in the world to be around my dogs all day long. They yeah. make me so happy. I'm literally sitting there on the couch. They're laying on me, licking my face and I'm just listing on eBay. Like, like it's, I love it. I love it. I can't express you how passionate I am about what I do. So it's not work for me. I work seven days a week. My wife's like, you're always working. I'm like, I'm not though. Like I'm having fun. I get burned out right. sometimes. I get like, and there's, and there's people that think like it's taboo. I'm like, yeah. how's this? taboo bro like like what's so weird about this you know like my parents days call, off like, like my parents, you know i gotta recharge my, my battery but yeah my parents will call me and like hey you want to go eat breakfast i'm like i can't like i'm editing a video and my and my parents are like oh you're editing a video okay like yeah. you know like 
I mean, I wouldn't even want to go. I'm like, come on, like this is this is what I do, you yeah. know. It's part of what we do. Like I I edit. I have two YouTube channels. I edit. I film all myself. I run my whatnots. I run my eBay. I run my Poshmark. I run my Macari. I list and ship all my own items. I'm a one man wrecking crew, you know. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. So yeah. Troy, now you're back. What about you, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was already here. I just was. It was weird. The thing was frozen, but I could still hear everything. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I I don't. I think I work six days a week, probably. I mean, Sunday, I try to mostly take off. I really don't list anything on Sunday. Maybe I'll ship something, you know, or get something ready. Mostly I take Sundays off. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, it's six days a week, and I'm, you know, the same as you. You know, I, it, it's me. So I'm doing YouTube and listing and packing and all of that. Now I've added the vintage store. I work there, like, at least once a week um for like four or five hours a day or i'm going in there maybe twice a week to restock the booth you know so i've, I've actually added to the mix and now we're adding this auction house thing i don't know where i'm going to find the time but i'm going to find the time because i'm going to be the one listing all the stuff online that's my portion of it but it's the same like i, I love doing it so it's not anything you know it, it used to be i remember there was a time when i was working the the real job where you'd wake up and you, you ponder, can I call in sick today? Not because I'm sick, but just because I didn't want to go to work. Oh, yeah. I don't I really have that. Now, there are days, like you said, you know, there's there's the burnout. Like, I don't feel like going to garage sales today. Or sometimes I'll go to garage sales and just not wear the GoPro. Like, hey, oh, I just yeah. oh, actually so go to a garage sale. So relaxing to that, yeah. But it's nowhere near like, man, I just can't go to that building today. Yeah, like I, I would like think about my life. Like when I'm putting my uniform on, when I when it was when my job, I would put my uniform on. I'm like, damn, I gotta drive to go to some. I gotta drive to work. You know, I gotta drive back. I gotta see the people there. I gotta act like I care about this place, uh, man. And and then like you know, I'll be at work and like three hours later, I'm like, hey, I'll text my wife. I'm like, hey, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave work early. And my wife like, why? Because like, I don't want to be here and just waste the time. I could be home right now, and. Oh God! Just we we control. I think the biggest thing is we control our own destiny, and you know when you work a nine to five job, you're making someone else rich. And at the same point in time, is like we control how much money we make, how much money we don't make. We have the times to spend time to take off any single day of the week we want to go spend time with our family. And I would not trade that for anything in the entire world. And cats, I mean, look at cat right there with, with Dalton right there. That's a prime example. I'm of what working I'm right now with him. You yeah. know, like this is work. Yeah. Um, we we make money on YouTube. I don't think we hide that. Um, that is a significant part of our income. Um, and this is the part, it's so funny. Um, and I don't like share the comments like everybody else, but somebody told me like that he was neglected. I'm like, I don't think you've watched my videos very much. Um, cause I, I quit my job to be home with, he is the reason that I quit my job and in doing reselling, because we started over and with my older kids, I was gone a lot. Like I traveled for work. I'd be gone at five days and my mom would keep them um, and I wouldn't see them. So even now, like, and he has the choice. I ask him, sometimes he doesn't want to come out here and that's fine. He'll stay inside with daddy, but sometimes he does. And as long as he behaves, he can stay out here. Um but he comes out, he loves the people that work for us. Um, he comes and sees them. Like this weekend, he and I went to Renninger's to the antique fair um, the whole weekend. He loves it because he gets to sleep in bed with me at the hotel and cuddle. Oh and we've kicked him out of our bed. He still has his bed in our room, but he's out of our just this year, just this year. Um, so we, I would say to answer the question, I work more than I worked at a regular job, but it like, I'm going to echo what everybody else said. It doesn't feel like work. Um, I, however, have been a workaholic my whole life. Like I had two jobs when I was 15, when I was nursing before I had him, I was working 48 hours a week or gone from home 16 hours a day. So that's kind of like my norm, my whole life. Um, but you know, like if I'm recording a video and he wants to do something, I can stop, you know, and do yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when well, that's when I quit. When I went full time, yeah. it was a big thing I was able to do is because I was I was in radio was my last real job. 
And I was sitting there doing uh, Friday night football games for one team on the radio announcing the game while my kid was across town on the dance team performing. And I, I didn't get to watch my kid do the thing that she loved to do. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going full time. We're going to do this. And so for her senior yeah. year, I saw every band concert. I went to every basketball and volleyball and football game that she performed at. I saw everything for the whole for her game? Senior year, which is awesome, you know. You did NFL games? You no, I did uh, high school games. Um, I've done I've done all sorts of. Oh, I've, I thought, I've been PA for minor league baseball and. I thought yeah, you meant I, NFL. Games. I'm like, dude, I would have stayed at that. I mean, we <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, it was a lot of fun because I did newspaper too, and I covered some professional stuff and college uh-huh. stuff. It, it's so much travel, though. It gets to it, it's tough because you're away all the time, and so uh-huh. this is so much different that I get to be home. Yeah. You know, even if I'm working on something, I can be in the same room as somebody else listing something and we're still at least in the same room, you know? You're there. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. thing is you're there and you can take like I work more hours, but I love what I'm doing and a lot of that like he and I after his swim class or before we go to yard sales, just just me and him. Um and that's still working, right? We're sourcing, I'm recording videos. Um so I couldn't bring him to the hospital and do nursing with him. That just wouldn't yeah. be a possibility. Um, where here, pretty much everything I do, he can come with me or be in here. He knows in here he has to be quiet. He, yeah, he, I always have to be quiet. <laughs> he has a he has a cubby in the back of the shed with like yeah. toys and all kinds of stuff back there. Where if he wants yeah. to be loud, he can be loud. Like yeah. I'm letting him talk, so now he's gonna he's gonna right. he's gonna push the buck here. Uh, Let's. I want to hear from I'm the chat here. What? Why does anyone here in the chat? Why do you guys do what you do? What you know? What drives you guys? You know, to be full time or part time sellers? Let's hear it from you guys, and because give yeah. me, some examples up here for the, for everyone else to see. All right. Chell sent us a four ninety nine super chat and wants to know: Do you have any items that you sold? that you wish you would have kept. And look, she said, what does that say? Hi, daughter. Very good. <laughs> We're learning to read. <laughs> yep, and I know that. Because... You're good, Dalton. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've sold some really cool items that I'm like, you know what? I That would have been cool to have. But... Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I'll bring something home and I'll, I'll show my wife and, you know, what what do you think? You know, it's kind of neat. Do you want to keep it? Every once in a while, we'll keep, you know, a jacket or, you know, something. We we end up, I bought a, a like a Kavu vest a couple of weeks ago that I'm like, no, I like this thing. I'm keeping it. Um, but for the most part, you know, she looks at it and she goes, well, I like the money better. Yeah. And so that's what, you know, if I'm willing to spend as much on it as what it's worth resale, I might keep it. I'm generally not, you know, so, you know, I, for the most part, I'd, I'd much rather have the money for the thing. Yeah. Especially for me, like I love collecting clothes. I love collecting hats. I like, I'm a, I'm a little girl, man. I love clothes so much. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with clothes, but there's so many times I've sold jerseys and jackets and hats that I wish I could come back. But, um, man, I love looking at my bank account. I love looking at money. And after I, <laughs> after a couple of days, I get over it and I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? So, so I would say for me, there's one thing that stands out after all these years. And I go through probably a lot of other collectors and a lot of other resellers have gone through the same. When I say this, it probably resonates with some of you guys, but you know, I do like to collect things, but it's not so much about getting the finished collection for me. Once my collection is finished, then I'm like, eh, I want to sell it off because it's the hunt. It's, the, yeah. it's the, the process of getting the items. But there was a Hulk Hogan action figure that was released by in the early 90s from Hasbro, the little Hasbro little plastic figures, okay? He's wearing a red outfit, and it was a mail-away figure. You can only get it by taking out the little, cutting out the back of the card and mailing it in to get, like, the thing. And there's they're very limited. And I had one, and I for the longest time I had it. It was in my collection, and I sold it for 100 bucks on eBay. And now that thing goes for like over a thousand bucks, and I just can't bring myself to to replace it. So unfortunately, I, I was one item that I wish I never would have sold. The money was great back then, but 
You know, like that was just that's one item that personally as a kid I would, you know, bring me a big smile on my face. Yeah, I don't think there's anything for me. I'm kind of like Troy, like I like the money more. Um, and my poor husband knows he's like, if it's worth more than twenty dollars, I don't get to keep it. Um, I would let him if he like really, really wanted it, but um I just I will like buy things with the intent of keeping them like we just bought i just bought an amazing real leather couch electric recliners for 110 dollars at the thrift store last week mine was so worn out and i've been looking i didn't want to like spend the money on a brand new one this one is in perfect condition it was 220 and it was half off day on sofas at the thrift store um so i will buy things for myself um that yeah. i need yeah he has two cents for everything. Um, yep. Yeah. Always. Always. I always do. You're right. You always Every do. Day. All right. Let's give her a super chat. Here you go. I don't think we've done this one yet. I, if you read some of these comments, I love seeing some of these. The flexibility because you're a wedding planner. Gives a flexibility during the, the weekdays. Retired, loves to do research on items, why people do what they do. You know, here's one, you know, because she gets 800 months Social Security, and that's why she does it, to help support herself. You know, mm -hmm. retired RN. For seven years, I was bored out of my mind. You know, like, there's all there's tons of stuff. Research is fun. Like, the research is I, – I love research. Mm -hmm. Cat, Cat, that's how Cat made your channel pretty much. Like, that's you. Like, yeah, you that's what you. made my channel blow up you. was my research. Yeah. You love you're doing your research and stuff that we all do. Like, you know, art, you're it's an expert. It's fun to stuff. learn. Yeah, like, you guys that. would probably be amazed at, like, poison. how much we walk by. Yeah. Like, yeah. all of us. All of us right here. We, like, we know nothing. Like, there's so much to learn. So yeah. much. Well, and like, then you we get probably the cool, walk by you, you, get, you get to connect people with their past or with memories, too, which sounds kind of corny, but, you know, it it's cool. Like I sold an aluminum Christmas tree. I still remember a couple years ago, one of those aluminum trees, it was still in the box and it was stamped. I forget where it was somewhere in Wisconsin was wh where the factory was. The lady that bought it was freaking out because her dad, when she was a kid worked at that factory doing that, putting stuff in boxes, shipping them out. She's like, my dad might've made, you know, or might've put that tree in that box. That's and now cool. I found the tree. The box was almost as important to her as the tree. Because yeah, that's, that's what pulled cool. her attention is, you know, my dad worked there during that time. He probably had his hands on that piece. And that's just a neat thing to be able to, to do. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a couple over the years that like grandkids of the people that made like pottery pieces, they bought the pottery from me that their grandparent made. And there aren't yeah. many out there. What's, which one, is thing cool. I hate, one thing I hate is when I go to garage sales and I'm like buying a bunch of things. And I'm like, yeah, that was my dad, and he just passed away. I'm oh, like, oh, yeah. it. I'm about to sell all this, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I hate. I hate it when I get. If they're not keeping it, you know what I mean? Like, it's got to go somewhere. All right, yeah. we only have two questions. Let's right. pump through these. That flipper dude wants to know if any of us have considered doing consignment. What a consignment, whatnot, where someone supplies all the stuff in a specific category, and you split the profit 50-50. Consignment on any platform is tough, um, especially when you then say 50-50, because if the person that gave you the stuff is expecting 50% of the profit, you're probably losing money because you don't get 50% of, of what it sells for, right? Because there's the fees. Um, you got your supplies, not to mention your time. And then you got to pay taxes on it at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So you can't split it down the middle. Otherwise, you're on the losing end of the deal. And then if it doesn't sell for what they thought it was going to sell for, then they're disappointed. And all of a sudden you're the bad guy because you didn't sell it for as much as what they thought it was worth. Uh, consignment can get super, super tricky really quickly. I stay away from that. You know what I mean? That's, I think those are headaches that are, uh, those are headaches that I avoid. You know what I mean? Like, uh, no, I say no to that every time. So for me, because I was 100% against consignment. Um, but after going to the This Perfectly, the live event, meeting some other people that deal with high-end consignment stuff, um, you know, taking in items or a couple hundred bucks, you know, I would consider that on like in my eBay store for one-off items if it was something that was like a high-end item that I knew could sell. 
Uh, but for whatnot, it would have to come down. It would it would have to be more than a 50-50 split. It'd be more like a 60-40 or or uh, or a 70-30 or something like that. Because I yeah. first off, that's my count that I'm putting out there. Secondly, I would be shipping all those items. I would be using my supplies. I would be paying taxes of those. And I'm doing all the work. You know, like that's a lot of work to and also use my social media accounts to market that. Um, there's a lot of stuff to go into. So, I mean, I would consider it, but I mean, it would have to be something that would make sense. You know, like if you're having, you have a whole sack of vintage t-shirts. Yeah, they're going to sell. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. You know, but if you just give me your junk from your garage, I'm not going to sell that or whatnot. So well, we are, like, like I mentioned, we're doing consignment stuff through our, our new auction house. Yeah. But there's a contract that we're having them sign yeah. that spells all that stuff out. You know, of this right. is what, you know, this is what you can expect. This is what you can't expect. So it's all, so I think if you're going to do it, even if it's with friends or family, you might have a form that says, look, here's in black and white. This is how we're going to do this. That way that it's not confusing after the fact. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So my answer would have been what Troy and Arts was three months ago. It is now different. Um, and that is because like Rod, I met people at camp listing party and at Vegas at the boss reseller. I am putting their link in the chat right now. I had this ready for this question. These three ladies at consignment chats are amazing. And here's the thing. You do have to send a 99, a 1099. I already pay an accountant guys. So I will say I have done one whatnot sale exactly like this profit split 50 50. Now to address what Rod said, so mine, I, so profit means after I paid somebody to, to catalog the items, after I paid somebody to ship the items, after I paid the fees, that is what it was. Mine that I did did not go well. And I feel like it didn't go well because I didn't really look at it and it's probably not stuff I would have taken because most of it was not named. And when it comes to linens, it was scarves. My audience likes named pieces. So if I would have realized that it was 90% unnamed, I would not have done it. So that was my fault on that one. <laughs> um, but I would do it again, but I would really look at what it was and it would be the same thing this kid um it would be after the cost of somebody to catalog and photograph after i paid my daughter to ship after i paid whatnot fees you because would, for you me pull back third like 30 percent for the taxes you're going to pay at the end of the year no because if i would have bought that from them i still would have had those taxes but I'm going to have a 1099 to them for the cost of goods. So it would be just like I bought them, but I made 50% on whatnot in two hours. So it will say I turned $400 into 800. You wouldn't want to make 400 bucks in an hour, regardless of if you're paying taxes on it. Yeah. So consignment chats, I dropped their link. They said exactly what you said. They, you, if you think, think you might want to do it you should get a consignment contract ready and it's kind of cool so there's how they do it is um they have it where if it doesn't sell in like 90 days they're gonna cut the price in half they don't do whatnot they just do on ebay they're gonna cut the price in half and then if it doesn't sell in six months it becomes theirs to do with what they want, whether that is put it on whatnot, whether that is redonate it. So the person signs that contract knows they might get zero for it. Right. And they will not accept contracts with people they don't feel like you were saying, like you don't want somebody to get mad, you don't get what they think you should. They make sure those people know we are gonna research and we will price it at what we think is fair. And so they, the, the, person consigning it has no control over the price they need to know you're the expert in research you're the expert in pricing and so the second thing that made me think that is i just bought all these boxes right i bought 2000 hermes louis vuitton christian louis vuitton and they 
have talked to me about buying the merchandise in there. Well, the merchandise that was in my boxes I bought was over a million dollars. I don't have that bankroll if they come to me to outright buy those bags and those shoes and clothes, right? I can't buy a $30 or $30,000 Hermes purse. I just don't have that in my budget. But if I had a consignment and I could say, hey, look, you know, I can do it on consign. I could even run it on auction for them. Then that would be worth it. Like Rod saying $200. I think for me, I would need like a $300 profit, whether that's a two hour whatnot show or $1,000 purse, right? I, I wouldn't be doing it on 20, 30, 50, even a hundred dollar items. I wouldn't find it worth it. Um, but if it's a thousand dollar item and you make 500 bucks, so watch their channel. They're super knowledgeable. They changed my mind about it because I said exactly what you guys said before. Like, Hey, I'm not getting in it. But if I do that and I pay them and that's a 1099, like I already have 1099s. I have to, have the accountant make so it's not any extra for me and I could you know increase by thousands of dollars a month if you find the right person that has a closet full of Louis Vuitton like would you really turn them down like if you don't have a hundred grand to buy their stuff you know so anyways that's that's my change so it's again it's consignment chats they are absolutely great and they're knowledgeable if you think you want to do it you know all right last question really quick i inherited and i know i i can't help with this i inherited a nintendo machine and some games what's the best way to test them and do i need to test them um there are some games that i say if if it's on a disc you can generally look at like a cd dvd looking thing you can look at it and see if it's clean it's almost always going to play like it just will. Now, if there's scratches on it, you might want to test it, but you can usually look at a disc and tell if it's good or not. But when you get into like the cartridges, like, cause I Nintendo might be a GameCube and might be discs. Um, but if it's the old school, just Nintendo entertainment, it's got the old cartridges. There's a lot of times that those are sitting in storage. They get dust in them. They get gunk in them. You have to sometimes use different things to clean the, the, the stuff inside those you almost have to test if it's a cartridge game, if, if you're going to know if it works or you list it as untested, then you're going to cut, you know, depending on what it is, you're definitely going to cut into your profit. Um, but if you've got the, I mean, if you've got the machine, you, you might as well test the games. Right. So, and if it's a matter of needing, you know, you, you have a machine, but not a cable. If, if you research the games and tell if it's going to be worth it, if they work, Get online, get on eBay, and buy the the five dollar cord or whatever. And then you can test it. Uh yeah. Depending, I guess. I guess just depending what kind of which Nintendo it is and what games you got. You know, um, there's a lot of games out there that aren't worth much. You know, uh, the Nintendo's if the Nintendo's broken. You're probably not gonna make a lot of money on it either. Um, I don't know. Just you gotta make a right judgment on yourself. You know, do you really want to? Do you want to make the money on it? Then yeah, test it out. You know. Buy the the cables that you need. Buy if you need a remote or the controller. Buy the controller. You know, depending on how much effort, how, what money do you want to make out of it? Of course, test it out. If you want to clean it up to make more money on it, clean it up. Of course, I think you do know. You know the answer, right? Like I believe so. So I would say for systems, you're gonna have to test out a system. Any system you get, you have to test out. But believe it or not, I don't. I used to sell strictly just sell games. That's, that's all I used to sell at one point in time. And I, you know, I don't test any of my games, to be honest with you, majority of them. And But here's the thing. If it's a disc and if it's scratched up, I'm going to test it up. I'm going to test it. I also had a disc cleaner, so I pop in my disc cleaner. I'm going to I'm gonna clean it. And then, and for people who don't know, a disc cleaner, you can get like the... It, it buffs the, the scratches out, right? Yeah, that's the easy yeah, throw. You get one for like yeah. 200 bucks. You get one at home and you can do it. And it's worth its weight in gold. Um, that's, that's like a cheaper one you can get. But when it comes to the cartridge, like the actual cartridge... Majority of the time, those things hold up over time. They do work. Even like he said that they're going to sit in the storage unit. They're going to be dusty, gunky. Take a Q-tip, mm -hmm. get a little rubbing alcohol on it, and just wipe it all over the all over the pins on the inside outside. Get a dry one, go through. It will take off majority of all that stuff. And nine out of ten times, it's going to actually work. Um, but I would say, and then here's a little tip for you guys. The Super Nintendo, 
the N64, and the GameCube all use the same AV cords. So you only need one cord for all three systems. So if you get that one cord, it works on all three different systems there. And then also, too, you can get yourself um, a multi-adapter that actually has like six different plugs on. It works for the Sega, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all the different systems. And you can get that one plug, and you can just keep that there at your house. So if you're ever missing the cables or a plug, you just have those off the side. You plug in and see if they work, and you're good to go. And if it's a yeah. little handheld, those things I've never found. I don't think I found a handheld game that didn't work. The cartridges, like Game Boy, yeah, or most whatever. of them it's work. I, I, I've only it's sold a few, good. and I don't test them. I yeah. am prepared to refund if somebody tells me it doesn't work, though. So I always have that in the back of my mind. Um, I wanted to put this up real quick, and then we'll let everybody say bye. We were running late. Um, Jay Pickett YouTube. said, I have no idea. You, yeah, YouTube is what I was going to say. Just YouTube the name of it, and you'll find videos on how to set it up. All right, we have kept everybody late. Let me make Troy big. Everybody, if you have shows coming up or new videos dropping, let them know. Um, and then Rod, Will, and me here is Troy. Yeah, um, I'm sure I'll have videos this week. Um, I've got to edit them, but sometimes I edit and then upload day of, right? So I'm, I'll, I'll have videos coming this week. Um, go check out the the uh, the second channel, uh, Big Sky Paranormal, if you're into ghosties and stuff. I actually, this new vintage sh shop that we moved into, we think there's a ghost in there. And uh, there's a video actually on that new channel of, uh, of of what's going on in the shop. It's It's actually kind of fun. So, uh, yeah, go check out Big Sky Paranormal and then give uh, Bella Peacock Vintage uh, a follow on Facebook. And then we can let you know when we launch the uh, the new auction house. It's going to be in uh, in January is when it goes live. So that's what I got going on. Perfect. Here's Art. Uh, yeah, as always, man, I'm, I'm on YouTube. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, definitely love posting. I'm I'm. I'm pretty frequent on posting uh, YouTube, about two videos a week, um, Instagram, TikTok all the time. Uh, definitely on there. Why not? I love doing live streams. We're doing it twice. I'm doing twice, uh, two streams a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm actually, I actually watch football while I'm streaming as well. So you get my live reactions of stuff like that. So uh, <laughs> definitely, if if you guys just like to have a good time. When's your next shows? When's your uh, next show? Black Friday. Black Friday again. Thank you, Rod. You're reminding me. This Black Friday, we're doing a three-hour live show of vintage shirts, hats, Disney, a lot of Disney stuff. So I'm definitely excited. Uh, future is bright for everybody, so I'm super excited for everybody. Perfect. And Kevin, Kevin says he wants to thank Rod for being a great host this weekend, and he's the best doggy daddy he's ever seen. For those that know, Kevin and the Death Pop Pickers spent the weekend at my house because uh, they had to get footage, and uh, they came down. So I took care of them, took them out, but... Uh, uh, so you guys want to see some of those videos, make sure you guys subscribe to Picking and Punching because those videos will be coming here in the near future. I took them to a toy graveyard at a flea market. It's something you guys have never seen before. I had literally 30 tables was stacked 10 rows high of just toys. That's where toys go to die. All right. So that's going to come here in the near future. Um, guys, check out my other channel, Flipping and Punching. I'm literally 101 subs away from 1,000. My goal for the end of the month is to hit 1,000 subs in that channel, my second channel. So please go, if I give you guys any type of value at all, please go sub to that channel. Please go sub to Troy and Art as well. They're guys, both great people in the community. I love watching both their videos and what they're doing. So make sure you guys go subscribe to those and check us out this Friday on Whatnot. Um, oh, I'm actually live tomorrow and Whatnot, doing a vintage and modern Disney auction. I don't even know what time is that. Six, seven o'clock, maybe six o'clock. I don't know. It's a horrible, horrible uh, on me for not knowing. But it's <laughs> a horrible advertisement. Yeah, horrible advertisement. Just check me out on whatnot, right? Live tomorrow night, uh, Disney, and I'll be live on Black Friday as well. I also will be live tomorrow night, and I think Black Friday as well on whatnot. I want to say thanks to these three guys for coming on. We greatly appreciate it. all their links to all three of their channels are in the description. Next week, we are going to have the Thrifting Twins along with J-Ride Flips, which he has not been on before. We're trying to get you guys some new faces on here along with some of the ones that have been on here. Um, tomorrow, my show is all sterling silver and some higher end costume jewelry. So check that out. I also look, there is my shameless plug. I just dropped my second channel. So after five months of no thrifting, I'm thrifting again. 
putting up two to three videos a week on cats treasure hunting. I put one out earlier today. It's the last Miami video. I, I went thrifting down in Miami and yeah, thank you guys so, so much for coming. We are here every Tuesday. Thank you to the moderators, Mark, Marsha, and Miss Lissette for dropping links for all of us tonight. We appreciate them. They are here helping us every week. And we will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye, guys.